X in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A spell that attracts all who spit facts on line all the time. Ones who drag my name every single day. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? They keep saying you don't have what it takes to carve out your own name underneath the shadows of gods. And I keep waiting for the day. never really comes the answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign the spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time the answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign a voice that compels all to rebel from all the shackle finds why do they just stand there again from when they fall from the battles I have overcome. We feel it, feel the cope and the seething tone that they make while I stand up, man among gods. And I keep thinking with my mill, shooting ropes in my cold that faces towards the sun. They hate, but I'm sitting comfy with their mom. The answer in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. The spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time. The answer in my name is not just a symbol or a target sign. A voice that compels all to rebel from all that shackled The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign The spell that attracts all who speak facts online all the time The answer to my name is not just a symbol or a target sign A voice that compels all to rebel from or a shadow mind Until I name your mom, it's gonna be able to take another hit from my name You see now, watch me not now, watch me now Oh boy, did I have to get stream ready in a rush today. Good morning to all of you. Hello, hello. Oh, and there's my camera. I do have to adjust my camera settings really fast. I, uh, I didn't do any prep today. Well, I did prep my normal, like, segment prep, but I didn't do any, like, uh, getting the stream ready like how I normally do. Uh, because I, I just, I woke up too late. So I didn't set up the camera, because every time I close OBS, it resets my camera settings, it won't save them. And so I have to recalibrate my camera every time I open OBS to go live. Hmm. Am I a mod on Cirrus' Twitch channel? Uh, probably? Maybe. I actually don't know, but I feel like that would be a strong probably. Hmm. Yeah, Eurocuck friendly stream, finally. Let's go. It's so good to have all of you here. What's up, guys? Hey, Zan, what client do you recommend for 2B? Um, I would always recommend, in any other time than now, I would always recommend Future Client, even though it's a one-time payment of $20. And if you reset any of your hardware or you move or anything like that, you have to ask for a hardware ID reset on the forums, the Future Forums, because they like lock down your account hardcore to your hardware ID on your PC. 
Um, but it's the safest and probably best hack client you can get. The problem is it hasn't updated 1.19 yet. So right now I'd recommend using the free Meteor client, which is what I've been using until Future fully updates its main version 1.19. Then I would recommend jumping onto Future. That's what I'm doing. Speaking of which, I will be playing more 2B2T on stream today. For those that don't know, Housemaster did a full server reset back to the day 1.19 dropped without the dupe economy reset, without the chunk culling and the changes people were mad about. Housemaster undid them. But we're still on 1.19, it's just the day before yesterday, 1.19 fully relaunched. So all the progress you, everyone made in 1.19 was all lost, and we're back to day one of 1.19. Day two, technically. Um, and I'm not the biggest fan of it, but as long as it's made most of the player base happy, and they're not like boycotting and trying to destroy the server anymore with uh, forced chargebacks of prio queue, then who cares? So I've gone nice and far out from spawn, won't say how far, and uh, I've made myself a new uh, outpost. Didn't you lose all your shit? No. Like, I, most of my wealth came from prior to 1.19. I just lost my netherite. So um, I've got more stuff now because he reversed the uh, dupe reset. I've got stacks and stacks and stacks of golden apples now. I've got, like, all of my gear. I've got my crystals. I've got my obsidian. I've got my e-chests. So yeah, um, that like I'm I'm pretty wealthy now, so I'm not too upset about it because the dupe reset did hurt my economy pretty bad. So now I'm back to being better off than I was at the original launch of 1.19. I found a big warm ocean. What game is 2B2T? It's a Minecraft server, the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. I I I got I I, I flew for a long time. I spent the last two days flying with an elytra until I found the perfect, big, warm ocean. It's a big coral reef. And that is the location, the perfect location for my underwater city, Abyssaris, that I've wanted to make since 1.13 was announced. Since before, frankly, but especially since 1.13. And then on top of that, um, uh, uh, I've built my little hut, my little shack, on the beach next to that ocean and I've I've also made the main structure of my new villager or sorry pillager raid farm my pillager XP farm yes I, I saw that I was in the new cosmonaut video yeah um, I haven't gotten it like uh, I need to cure a villager like I need to run around and find a zombie villager trap it in a boat cover it up cure it name tag it then, like, get it into the, like, area where the villager goes for the raid farm. But once that's been done and I've gotten Bad Omen, it'll be ready to go. It will be ready to go. Did you play the new BTA 1.7.7 update? What What's BTA? What is that? Oh, better than adventure? Is that what you're asking me, that one, Luna? The new Better Than Adventure update? Ah. Call me sacrilegious, like a sacrilegious Minecraft boomer if you wish. I've not played Better Than Adventure. I've just been hardcore. My single player gameplay has been on the Mango Pack. It's Minecraft Beta 1.7.3, but it has more mods. And it has a list of mods that are very close to me specifically. The Mango Pack is like... Barring a few additional mods I would prefer to be added, like the Millionaire mod and whatnot, and multiplayer, is like the perfect, perfect mod pack from Beta Minecraft. It's even got clay soldiers, dude. I need to get into, into like doing the clay soldier stuff in survival, because I remember as a kid I would play with the clay soldiers mod and have just a ridiculous amount of fun staging battles. That was always so fun. My PC would lag out so bad as a kid because I had like onboard uh, like Intel graphics or whatever. <laughs> anyway, so here's the plan for today's stream, okay? We're gonna do a good bundle of segments, okay? 
big old good bundle of segments. And then, while doing many of those segments, I will be playing on 2B2T and progressing on the new 1.19 reset, actual 1.19 update. Um, so I'll, I'll be streaming that in the background of the politics I'm covering. Today's stream is going to be like two to two and a half hours long. I'm going to try to make it a shorter stream than usual. And the reason for that is because after stream today, we are all going to be getting in Xander's Theater VC with my friend Balthazar, and we are going to be continuing our binge through, our binge watch party, binge through or whatever, of Adventure Time. Um, for those that don't know, the Fiona and Cake show premieres in three days. Three days? Four days counting today. So we've got to really push it now. Especially because we got to do Obsidian, uh, or not Obsidian, Distant Lands and stuff like that too. Let me see if I can get the uh, the watch list up really fast and tell you guys where we'd be starting. Because I actually forgot uh, what episode we finished off on last time. I remember it was going to be hype. I remember we were like starting off with some Kino tonight. Let's see. Mmm. Yeah, we finished off last night with the beginning of the Fincel arc. We finished off last night with Earth and Water. It's crazy how we fit. We started, uh, or not last night, the night before last night. We started the night before last night with Incendium, like the start of the um, Flame Princess plot, and then we ended it. We ended it. We ended it with Earth and Water, which is the end of that plot, of that, like, arc, and, and the beginning of the Fincel arc. By the way, about the theater, a friend of mine couldn't join past a certain point. Uh, is there a member limit on the VC? Yes. So while you, 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 ha yeah, you have to be a member of the Discord server, so you'll want to ask a mod or something for member if you don't already have it from being active. Um, but there is a 50 person limit to the, to the, like, VC. People do leave and you will be able to get in if you just, like, wait it out. However, it is first come, first serve. So once those slots are taken, once all 50 slots are taken, there's nothing we can do to make another VC for, like, we, it's not physically possible for us to expand the VC. There's nothing we can do beyond that. So it is first come, first serve. So you want to be quick to snatch up your spot in the watch party before it gets taken by somebody else. It's a lot of slots, and we don't usually hit that limit, but considering that I'll be directing people, now, right now, over 120 people after stream into that watch party does mean that a lot of slots are going to be taken up. We will probably hit the cap today. We'll probably hit that cap. The smartest thing to do would honestly be to camp in there. Well, I'm live, because then you know you won't get your slot taken. I'm getting the Meteor Client. Nice, good shit. I've also given Bal- uh, not Balthazar, uh, Kyanist, good friend of mine, the cords to where I'm camping out, so he'll be helping with the construction of everything. He's traveling as we speak, so it's gonna be a bit. <laughs> it's gonna be a bit of traveling. Um, I've got a few other friends I think I trust enough to give coordinates to where I am. Um, and, and they may be joining me, but for the most part, I'm, I'm gonna count on this build project being mostly solo on stream. Um, hell yeah, there's Kyanist. Uh, it really depends on how much my friends are gonna be playing, like, how much, like, gets contributed. Can I help? Um, maybe Avalon of Babylon. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll screen it. It really depends on how big of a job this ends up be being. I've gotta excavate a lot of earth at the bottom of the ocean, down to, like, almost bedrock. I want to make it really deep, so there's a lot of height to build underwater. Like, I want there to be a lot of height to work with. And so, yeah. We'll see. I would like to ask, why is there a limit of players connected to B2T to that degree that a priority queue must be set up for the server? Um, because Minecraft is a poorly made game, fundamentally. Um, 
it is not 2B2T's fault that they have a player limit of how many people can join the server. Um, as a matter of fact, it used to be the server could only fit 240 people without it breaking down and crashing. He's, Housemaster has recently upgraded it to 360. So now 360 people can join 2B2T at once without it crashing um, or lagging out. But beyond that, everybody gets put into the queue, and then you gotta pay for priority queue to get in either A, instantly, or faster than everybody else. I don't really play Minecraft, but I do play Terraria. Ever thought about doing a multiplayer world? Nah, not for Terraria. Like, as a big server thing? Nah. Yeah. Oh! Heck yeah! Cherry T21, thank you so much for the five tier one gifted subs. I really appreciate that. Thank you for the $25. That is so, so, so kind of you. I'm sure that Ratty Ratera, X Goosenoose, The Death of Death, Coin Dog, and The Bin Reaper all really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and sent a link. Another Glorb video? Okay. We'll, we'll watch the Glorb music video. Oh, Dumbbell. It's, La it's ASAP Larry. All right, we'll, we'll listen to ASAP Larry. These things, these videos are insane. Lobster gang. Charles D, do you know that Technoblade died? Speaking of lobster, I'm not gonna lie, surf and turf is so fucking good. Like, one of my favorite meal combinations is a lobster tail with a- with steak. Like, steak and lobster, I know it's bougie food. Well, it's not really that bougie. Lobster was, like, propagandized into being bougie food. You guys know that, right? Like, it was actually considered very low-class, like, cheap garbage food for a long time. And there was, like, a propagandistic campaign to make lobster seen as, like, a bougie, expensive food, and they got price jacked, and, yeah. Yeah, it was, like, prison food, it was, like, canned, like, food that you could get, like, dozens for, by, by the dollar, you know? Um, yeah. But I will tell you, a nice steamed lobster tail alongside some steak, it goes hard as fuck. <laughs> I like to think Goo Lagoon is, um, like Bikini Bottom's Venice Beach. Yeah, Larry the Lobster is disease of Spongebob. Yeah, Cos Cosmonaut Variety Hour played a clip of me. It was pretty cool. Thank you, guys. Techni it was on the trending page, too, which means technically, in some form, I've made the trending page for the first time. Okay, that went pretty hard. Thank you, Cherry T21. You're always dropping these bangers in chat. I'm sure uh, Ratty Ratera, Goose News, uh, The Death of Death, Coin Dog, and the Ben Reaper all appreciate it as well. Thank you, thank you. And then Zagafer with the Tier 2 sub. I'm going to assume that's just a one-monther, but let me know in chat if I'm wrong. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Didn't say anything, but I'm sure you meant some lovely things by it. Let me just update that dono goal really fast. I gotta do it manually every time. Oh, it was a three-monther? Oh, hell yeah! Oh, hell yeah! Holy shit, that's $24 Redinos right there. Hold on. Heck yeah. Okay, that puts us at 49 instead. Thank you. Oh my gosh, my nose. 
It's dripping. I've actually got it, like, pretty cold in here. I've set up a system the last few streams that has worked really, really well. Um, uh, uh, basically, the... Like, I've got my AC. I've got, like, a window unit, window shaker AC in that living room right there. And then I've got the doors open. I've got two doors between me and the AC. So I open them both up, and I got a box fan that's blowing the cold... And I also shut that door so no cold air can get out of the living room. So it's, like, forcing the cold air into, like, a wind tunnel into my room. And then I've got that door shut. So it's it's got... I am cold right now. I'm, I'm like, tempted to get up and shut that door to let it warm up a little bit. But I, I'm fine being cold. I like the cold. I just... I hate the heat. I really do. I really, really hate the heat. Sander Hall out here fucking with Glorb. Nice. Yeah, we, we love Glorb. We love Glorb. All right. As always, guys, if you're watching right now and you want to support me, you can do so in a variety of ways. You don't even have to support me financially through a donation sub or gifted sub. You can just hit the like button. That thumbs up button over on YouTube actually forces the channel, like, or not the channel, the platform itself to push my content out to new people. So if you haven't already, please consider hitting that like button. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon as well if you haven't already, because YouTube doesn't actually tell you when I go live or upload a new video unless you hit the bell icon. It's not, like, you're not actually subbed unless you hit the bell icon. It's weird, but that's how YouTube does it. What up, Zan? First time watching live? Love you, bud. Uh, trans rights motherfuckers. True! Welcome, Rue. Um... In the distance, thank you for the Prime sub over on Twitch. 15 goddamn months. Holy crap, thank you. Slashy, thank you for the tier 1 gifted sub to Night Moth. I really appreciate that. Said, uh, for the, thank you for the $5. Said, finish watching the Both Sides video, Zan, please. Or finish watching the Both Sides video, Zan, please. The Both Sides video? What? SMBC both sides? You forgot it already? SMBC both sides? What? What are you talking about, Slashy? Please, don't- don't use acronyms. The one with evolution versus Christ riding a dinosaur? All right, Slash, she lost me. We're going to have to move on. All right, so... Got some stuff to cover today. We got some stuff... to cover. Hmm, what to cover first? All right, chat. Here, here's the big question, though. Do we cover Yellow Flash... The Daily Wire, Chris Chan, or Vivek Ramaswamy first? Who who do we cover first? Chris Chan? Ooh. Hey, Balth. After stream in like two hours is when we're going to do our watch party, okay? We're going to be doing more adventure time after stream, and I'm going to be bringing all the viewers into the watch party, so it's going to be big. Probably Chris Chan? I see. You guys want Chris Chan the most. Which is why... I'm going to hold off on the Chris Chan stuff until a little later on stream. Because <laughs> I know it'll keep you guys around waiting for me to do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know, how to, I know how to play the YouTube game. I gotta make you guys wait and stream for the topic you guys really want. So you're around longer. <laughs> Eh, 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 eh. I figured you all out. Chat wants to eat dessert before dinner. Exactly. You gotta eat your you gotta eat your vegetables before you can have your meat, okay? That's just how it works. You have to eat my vegetables before you can have my meat. Okay. Joestar, thank you for the uh, tier one prime sub 
over on YouTube chat through the membership program. I really appreciate that. We just got a new tier one member. Thank you, thank you, Joe Star. Dude, I saw this video on Reddit the other day. That that like, I felt simultaneously really bad for the guy, but I was also like, okay, this guy's an idiot. The video was captioned, had to fire my new employee on his first day. And it's a video recording of, like, a manager opening the walk-in fridge to an employee whose back is, like, turned. And he turns around, and, and like, the, the boss just immediately says, I need you to clock out right now. And the guy turns, and he looks, like, freaked out, like his eyes are, are bulged out, but he's also, like... He's doing that? <laughs> and and when the boss says, I need to clock out right now, he just goes... <laughs> right now? <laughs> With, like, smoke coming out? Because he was hitting a vape. He's got, like, the vapor. <laughs> he's got the vapor, vapor coming out. And he's trying to keep it in. He's trying to keep it in to hide it, but also also to keep it in so he can get stoned. And the boss is like, I need you to go home right now. I need you to clock out and leave. And he's just getting fired, and he doesn't even realize what's happening because he's so high, and he's still trying to hide it, but he's, like, not hiding it well, and the boss, like, knew what he was doing before he even walked into the walk-in fridge. God. That video was amazing. I feel bad for the guy, but also, like, Jesus Christ, that was dumb. Like, take a- like, on your lunch break, your people are allowed to go smoke a cigarette on their lunch break, go out to smoke a cigarette, and just go, like, hit a few- take a few hits outside. Like, around the corner of the building or something, like, uh, I don't know. Like, there's just such better ways to pull that off, you know? Or you could get a job where you're allowed to just, you know, get stoned on the job, like what I'm about to do right now. Okay, I've probably taken in too much weed for the comedic effect. <laughs> I'm starting to actually get quite stoned. Which isn't good. Don't want to get too stoned on stream, even though it's sativa. I'm trying to stay 100% there. At least 95% there, actually. I had to quit to start my new job tomorrow? Oh, jeez. Well, at least you got a new job, right? Drunk stream when? Oh, I gotta crack my... My shoulders. Um, when will I do my next drunk stream? Probably at the like next big debate. Like at the next big presidential debate or whatever that happens, I might do a drunk stream. I just I'm not an alcohol guy, you know. Maybe if it's beer. Modelos aren't bad. You guys remember if you watch my drinking streams, I would pound down Modelos. So maybe I could buy, like, a few cases of that and just pop one of those down every time I cringe. American beer. I've had... Okay, I tried Bud Light once a long time ago, and I had to spit it out. It was vile. And th this is someone whose first ever alcohol was Canadian Mist Whiskey. 80 proof cheap Canadian whiskey from a plastic jug. It comes in a big plastic jug. Um, and I, I had to actively spit out Bud Light. It, like, that beer was not good. Um, Modelo, though, I've, I've pounded Modelo's. Yeah, I spit out. That was before it was even the trans beer. Well before it was the trans beer. But Bud Light, I know I don't like. Um, anything that has light in it, I know I'm not going to like. I don't like light beer. I don't. I need to try some, like, dark brews, like some Guinness. Should I try- is Guinness any good? I hear people hate it, but I also hear people love it. Is Anseld? I'm not much of a beer guy. I need to go to a, like a, not a dispensary, to a brewery. My mom and my stepdad would go to breweries all the time when I was a kid before I could legally drink and I would just you know go there and I would just eat food or just like sit on my phone and I'd have nothing to do um, now I can actually go to a brewery and 
try all the samples they have you try there until I'm like, ooh, this is what I like. Of course I'd try it, Rock. I'd try any beer. Go to Germany? Why do you guys in chat keep saying go to Germany? Like, like, go to Germany, Zan. Donate! <laughs> okay, yeah. Alright, I'll go to Germany if you guys donate. I'll go to Oktoberfest. I'll go to, like, Mexico and drink all the tequila. I'll go to Russia and drink all the vodka. Actually, I won't go to Russia. Well, I'll go to Russia and do the funniest shit ever, and then I'll drink all the vodka. Um, like, yeah, I... Would I, would I get in trouble for joking about doing the funniest shit ever to, to the leader of Russia? Like, well, I guess we're not outright hostile with them, right? I don't know. Jan, uh, Zan, just insist transmission when you get your platinum blonde hair. Make Putin into a femboy. Yeah, that would all that would actually be funnier than what I was thinking. We'll go to Russia after Ukraine storms Moscow. Yeah. Don't joke about Putin. He has no sense of humor. Putin can't find me. I guarantee you, Putin wouldn't be able to find me. Like right now, Putin couldn't find me. He definitely couldn't. For one, my name's not attached to where I live. Two. Like, I could easily just, like, st stay home, <laughs> you know? Like, just not go out. Like, if, if, if Putin was like, this American commentator needs to be taken out, find him, kill him, however you must. Well, uh, Mr. Kremlin, he never leaves his house. And, uh, we don't even know where he lives. We tried to get... We tried to offer to poison his food, but his Uber delivery driver wouldn't let it happen. He tips maximum amount every time. That's why I tip my Uber delivery drivers the maximum amount every time. The Uber Eats driver, the Postmates driver, whatever. Every time, that maximum amount. Mostly because I use Honey and other coupon stuff now to get, like, a really big discount on my food. So it's not, like, that bad of a, uh, of, like, a cut into my wallet. But also, um, like, you just, you... You don't want your food delivery driver to dislike you. Like, the existence of food delivery has doubled the chances of you having boogers spit or cum in your food like when you go to a, to a restaurant there's like a chance that happens to you but then when you add some random extra person delivering your food you've doubled the chances possibly more so i i i do the maximum tip amount to ensure that doesn't happen to me well they the, the apps ask for a tip before they deliver so they, they know how much you're tipping them before they make the delivery, so, yeah. Yes, the Bin Reaper, that's what I was quoting. Me, word for word, direct quote something. My chat, have you seen the thing you're direct quoting? It's like, uh, I love you guys. Uh, okay, can I... T I won't say who. But somebody involved with the management of my uh, free company on FF14 told me, Zan, I love your fans, but sometimes it can be real hard work having to interact with and, like, explain basic social cues to autistic people. <laughs> and just left it at that. Just left it there. Rude, also true, yeah. Listen, some of you guys, some of you guys are, uh, are a little, are, have a little, have a little less to be desired in the social skill category, but that's why you're here, because I get to teach you, you know? You've got the good political knowledge, and you've got the good internet knowledge, but when it comes to social interactions, you guys, 
generally self-admittedly are not the best. These effing autistics, am I right? True! As a retired school teacher, I can relate. How do I just now find out you're a retired school teacher, the Dark Canuck? But also, yeah, I feel like, yeah, y y you'd know, yeah. Excuse me, people love hearing about my Legos. True! Well, my Legos are Minecraft, okay? That's my, that's my autism, okay? Listen, if you have the right, if your autism is hyper-focused on the right thing, you can use your autism to get pussy. It's not a lie. A simple fact. You can. I don't know what cat that is, uh, Val. Um, imagine wanting pussy or dick. It, you could get bussy, too. Like, I'm not kidding. I am pretty sure I've gotten girls into me just by autistically ranting about something I'm into before. If, if you're autistic enough about the right thing and you rant about it enough, then you'll be able to, uh, that, that you'll, you'll be able, you'll be able to really just get, you, you'll, you'll be able, yeah. It'll be the meme where it's like the guy explaining the nerd shit and the girl is like, I want to suck him dry right now. That, that'll be you though. You'll be the guy in that meme. I've been the guy in that meme. Trust me, it works. There is a barrier being attracted already you have to meet before the autistic ranting is hot. No. No, that is incel logic, okay? So, if you're talking to a stranger, sure. I'm talking about, like, let's say you're already acquaintances or friends or know a girl, and you're already talking. She asks you what's up or asks you something that indicates she has an interest in hearing about what you're interested in and then you start autistically, like, ranting about it for, like, 30 minutes, they will be into it. Depending on what it is. Yeah, I met the stranger? Yeah. Like, it will endear you to them in an attractive way. Like, you will gain attractive points on top of what you already have for them. That is what will happen. <clears throat> what if I'm 220 pounds? You will join- you will gain attractive points on top of what you already have for them because of that. I promise you. For example, um, gardening. Like, do any of you guys in chat like gardening? A lot of girls like gardening. If you like anything about gardening or nature or anything like that, you can, like, talk about it. Autistically, fic like, talk about a story or a particular animal or plant you're obsessed with. And then just, like, let loose all of your autistic hyperfixation on that girl. I promise you, hiking, autistically, hi hi like, just let it all out on hiking. Trust me, it works, okay? Exactly. Worst comes to worst, you'll make a hot friend who's a girl, and she might have hot friends who want to fuck you. That's a that's that's the good point. Yeah, and it, you might even get extra lucky. There's even the third extra option of that hot girl that you're talking to wants to fuck you now, and she's got a hot friend who also wants to fuck you, and you get to have a three way. That's that's the best case scenario, and that's happened. Yeah, sometimes they'll just let you hit because you're goofy. I just got back. What are we talking about? Social skills. Anyway. Cherry T21, thank you so much for the tier 4 sub. Holy crap, how many months is that? Is that a 1 monther or a 4 monther? I don't want to under. or 3 monther. I don't want to undercredit you there. Three-monther? 
Hell yeah! Holy crap, Cherry Tea! Oh my god, that is a lot! Holy crap! Oh my god! Jesus! Hey, oh yeah, I referenced this YouTuber recently, actually. That's really funny that you, um, that you sent this person. I actually, I literally referenced this YouTuber's, like, video about American Diet recently. That's funny as fuck. Uh, I'll put that one on after this. Cherry T 21 thank you so much for the $96! Oh my lord, that is a lot! Thank you, thank you! Let's watch this video really quick, right after I update the dono goal. Hot damn, that puts us at halfway to the dono goal for the day. Once again, chat, it's so weird. My lower viewer count streams make more money than my higher viewer count streams. I swear to God, if I had a thousand viewers right now, I'd have $30 on that dono goal. But I have 141, so I've, I, like, we've halfway filled it up. This is more money than I usually make on most streams. And yet, I have less, way less viewers than I usually get. It's so... It's so weird. It's because you pay more attention to us? Maybe. That could be why. I'm not complaining or anything. It, it like, literally balances itself out. So if I have a lot of viewers, I get a lot in the form of, like, ad rev from the stream. But if I don't have a lot of viewers, I get a lot in the form of donos. So it, fil it literally balances out either way, and I make a consistent amount. But, like, it's just interesting, and I'm curious about why it does that, you know? Uh, anyway. Here's the video that, uh, Cherry T said. I'm reading something yeah. here. What is the baseball classic? Oh, it's kind of like the World Cup. World Cup? Yeah, but for baseball. Did Germany win? <laughs> no, Japan won by beating the US. <laughs> now you know what it feels like to have your dreams crushed by the Japanese. At least it wasn't in the group stage. Overall, it was a really That's fun fucked. tournament, though. Like, you got to see a lot of countries compete against each other. Like, Italy. Yeah, Italy has a baseball team. Yeah, and Britain. Bas. And the Netherlands. Viva the Dutch. Uh, yeah. There is a chance that the Netherlands can win a World Cup. I mean, it would be a real underdog story, but... but... there is a chance. Yeah, in baseball. It doesn't matter what boys the Dutch are not allowed to win a World Cup. I don't understand why when this is... When is the next baseball classic? Well, it just ended, so in four years. We now have four years to bring baseball to Germany, make it a huge success, assemble a team, and stop the Dutch. Why? How would you feel if Canada won something and was happy? You son of a bitch. I'm in. No. Fuck! That is- that is how you get us. That is how you get- holy shit, that's how you get us. We can't let Canada win anything. Do you think Pete Alonso would change his name to Peter Alonso Schmidt? <laughs> that's really good. Okay, hold on. When I- German learns about U.S. heartburn commercials. This one's so funny. Yeah, heartburn or diarrhea, I just take my smelt so so I can get on with my life. What is this commercial? What do you mean? It's these commercials that I always see where cowboys cry and they hold their tummies. Oh, that's for heartburn. Heartburn. You know that pain that you get in your chest after you eat? Uh, no. Like when you eat a lot of burgers and nachos and then the crusades happen in your stomach. But this happens very rarely, no? Yeah, not every meal. For some. Uh, but enough. <laughs> Commercial. Thanks to Pro Liexo, I no longer shit my pants. And I can finally yeah. spend time with my family. You don't get them in Germany? No more heartburn, no more diarrhea. No, why is the woman smiling about her diarrhea? She's smiling because she has her diarrhea under control. A lot of Americans have heartburn and diarrhea. Some people just have underlying issues. Has it been explored why Americans suffer from heartburn and poopy pants? Nobody knows. You know, some of these ingredients are illegal. Listen, buddy, if you don't want the heartburn, then don't eat our beautiful American patriotic food. You make a strong argument, I would take some pep talk. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Even the German gets it. That, that video is funny as fuck. I love that one. Like, just the- j any video where the humor, the idea of the joke, is that Americans will just subject themselves to effectively self-harm for, like, American food, or, or any American pastime, is, uh, is a good joke. Because it's real. I got heartburn for the first time after moving to the UK. I got heartburn for the first time after I got COVID, and since my COVID, like, went away, it's mostly been a, like, once a month thing, you know? Like, it, I don't think I've even gotten it this month, but I have these antacid shoes on hand just in case, you know? 
in case like the heartburn hits and it's bad because like if you if you get heartburn and you don't immediately deal with it it's a problem but if i take one of these things instantly the second i get heartburn it'll go away immediately and there'll be no discomfort after the heartburn from like your esophagus getting burned from stomach acid so if i take the calcium carb carbonate as fast as possible it just goes away instantly and there's no problem and i don't get it again for a month or more but i got it for the first time when i got covid i used to have heartburn a lot that shit sucks yeah it was never like really bad heartburn just like during the midst of covid i could not lay on my right side um I literally couldn't. I could not lay on my right side without stomach acid pouring up my esophagus, it felt like, and just burning everything on the way up. It felt like it would just bubble up, and so I had to lay on my left side at an upwards angle. I had to, like, um, when I had COVID, I had to, like, build up a bunch of blankets and pillows to make a ramp so I could lay at about this angle on my left side. And that let me breathe and not have my uh, esophagus fill with stomach acid while I had COVID. It was rough. COVID was rough. <clears throat> Thankfully, I'm Brazilian, so my food is actually edible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while your food may be edible, um, on the other hand, the... <laughs> quality of life in Brazil's not great. I, um, I've got a friend. I've got a Discord friend who lives in Brazil, and he just casually dropped the other day, our school was attacked. I was like, what? I was like, yeah, these guys come to our school, and they attack it with guns and weapons, and we chased him off. I was like, bullshit. And then he sent the fucking video. And like all of the bit, like the school's like a big concrete building with like bars. They they're like like burglar bars along everything. You sure he wasn't talking about Texas? Nah, definitely Brazil. Um, <clears throat> it was like holy shit. Like it, like the the school looked more like a American prison, you know. And like it's all these students chasing the, this grown man down the hallway who came to the school with a gun to try to like attack kids and shoot it up i guess and they just chase the guy like as a mob they chase him out of the school and he's been like a recurring visitor uh who who's like come to try to attack the fucking school so apparently that's brazil yeah our public schools are war zones yeah holy shit <laughs> ambar chris i oh, stay safe or amber chris Maybe I will come to Brazil. With a Glock 19. <laughs> if they let you. I Like, they let you bring your gun as an American to Brazil, right? Like, there's no way they don't let you. Like, if you've got a legal gun and you're like, Hi, I'm American. I would like to visit Brazil. I would like to be carrying. No? Yeah, I'm not going to Brazil, guys. I'm sorry. I'm not going to Brazil unless I know that the second I get there, I can get, like, an Uber to a place where someone will, will like, be like, all right, here's your gun. You just return it when you're ready to go. You are going to Brazil. No. I was just talking to my BF the other day about getting a pink Hello Kitty Glock 19. Dude, I... It, I, I've been thinking about, like, if I ever get, um, Cherry a gift, like a really, really expensive gift, I think I want to get them the, uh, the Bochi Glock that matches Cherry's aesthetic and branding. I think it's a Glock 19. Didn't look like a full size. Yeah, here it is. It 
Or maybe it is a 19. Very good memes. It looks like an IT. Yeah, it looks like a Glock 19. Which is probably what I'll end up getting. I want. I, I thought about getting a Glock 17 because bigger, longer barrel, full size, easier to shoot, more accurate. But um, like, if I if I ever want to conceal carry, it's a lot harder to do it with a Glock 17 than a Glock 19. So Glock 19 is what I'll go with. And I I've literally shot most of the pistols. Like, most mainstream pistols you could, like, hope to get your hands on to try out. Glocks just feel the best in my hand. Like, I, I literally waited to try Glock last because I was resisting the truth. And then I finally tried out the Glock, and it was like, yep. The Glock's the best handgun. I, I can't deny it. It's it just, it, it feels fucking great. Beretta is nice too. I like a Beretta M9 as well, but the 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 Glock 17 is just amazing. Feels great. Trans rights are human rights. True. True, they are. They are those. They are those indeed. All right, chat. It's time to do segments. No more stun locking. I'm getting into Minecraft. Pog Pog, getting on 2B. Now let me make sure my cords are not showing in any way that could potentially be bad okay it looks like my cords are safe good 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 okay I press escape doesn't show cords good okay i wonder if i press yeah it does show the cords if i press m and show the map though so i don't want to do that good okay cool all right allow me to do that and then I got that there. Pog. Okay. So chat. Before I get into segments, I'll explain what's going on. I've actually modded up, as you can see, my uh, installation of my hacked uh, 2B2T client. So I do have... Uh, I won't hit it on accident, Kyanist. Um, so I actually have uh, uh, the physics mod on. Uh, with uh, the waves and everything and like the blowing vines and and like i've got some extra audio um i i know you can't really hear that as well um and it's nice it's pretty um house masters fully reset the server like literally fully reset the server back to the first day of 1.19 without the changes people hated so uh we had to fully restart right i've got netherite I'm, i am netherite it up However, I do have to rename all my stuff again, because it's got the cringe names. Like, this is called Jew's Food, for example, because this was stuff made by other players in the server a while ago, and then duped, and then I got that gear, and then I duped it, but I never got the chance to rename it. So now, we've got to make our XP farms so I can make it anvils, and we can afford to rename my stuff, and apply, like, netherite to it and all that. I've also flown around for a long fucking time in the overworld. A long fucking time. Until I found just a goddamn massive deep ocean. Um, I, if I could, I would open up the map right now, though it would show chords. This deep ocean is fucking huge. Like, it is huge. Not all of it is covered in coral, but there is also a lot of goddamn coral to mine up. So, this is literally the perfect spot. Literally, right here, right over there is the perfect spot in that giant enormous deep ocean is where we're going to build uh, or, or warm ocean is with the coral reef is where we're going to build it and on top of that I've already gotten to work building if I fly over here the physics mod bugs out for where for some reason the warm ocean doesn't show as the same color as it's supposed to be anyway I have built the majority of at least like the pain in the ass part <laughs> of uh the raid farm so i can take this up i built a nice bubble elevator glass tube i always like to make these bubble elevators out of glass because it feels like a pneumatic glass tube or something and this leads up to this platform where we've got the kill chamber 
And then if I go into free cam, you can see I've got the boat, I've got the, the thing. So it's all ready. It is all ready for, um, like, functionality. The only issue is, um, right now, we have no villager. So we actually need to get a villager, which I think we'll just cure one for. But we're going to, like, wait till nighttime. And that's our current, like, what I'm going to do right now is, like, we're going to wait till nighttime uh, for a zombie villager to spawn. Trap it, cure it, and then, like, bring it over here and, and get it in that little, like... There's a little area I've made for it down there for it to go in. And then I also want to add just a shit ton of chests on hoppers that just go all the way down to the bottom there. Um, and uh, uh, allows me to have tons of chests to fill with items. Because, like, I don't think you guys know, but this is going to produce so many emeralds and, uh, like, totems and so many, uh, so much gunpowder for firework rockets for elytraing around. Um, it's going to be a very good resource farm as well as a XP farm. And so I want to get that, like, working to full functionality, you know? Anyway, uh, yeah. I'm going to jump down. I'm going to fly back to the house, and, uh, we're going to start our first segment. And I'm going to get underway with, uh, the operations I want to get done. Also, for those wondering about me showing my, uh, terrain... And getting terrain exploited, Housemaster has implemented, cu like, custom terrain generation. So presumably, and I'm putting my trust in house here, presumably it is safe to live stream and upload videos of your base on 2B now as long as you don't show coordinates. Now, obviously, if, for example, I had a, uh, a point, like what I have here and here, like at spawn that was like, ah, the zero zero or whatever, then people could use that to determine exactly where I am if I had a point at zero zero but considering the fact that all of my waypoints are just relative to my location out in the world um th there shouldn't be any worry about that no one should be able to use my uh, bedrock or any terrain gen to find me we should be totally safe for me to live stream this build project also there's a good chance that with me live streaming this I may be doing the first fully live-streamed build project on 2B2T since 2017. That's not a joke or an exaggeration. I don't think a live-streamed serious build project has taken place on 2B since 2016 because of terrain exploits. Or 2017 since because of terrain exploits. With 1.19, this water ocean city I'm building may be the first big serious stream 2b2t base build since 2017 in literal years i remember watching fit build his fitlantis thing back in 2016 yeah only there was an aquatic update and also a lot of people have built bases such as fit that are just literally like a remodeling of a guardian temple and that's a cool base i think that's dope i've even done it before but i want to build something from scratch here something original something unique we will be using prismarine but quartz i'm gonna be using nether quartz as well as a big uh, material in the project as well um and the goal is going to be to build an underwater atlantis like city that is a much more unique design so we're going to be mining up a ton of quartz as well, and a ton of prismarine. And those are going to be the two primary building blocks for the base. There needs to be an X somewhere in the design. It could be an X-shaped city. Yo, that would be cool. It could be my logo. Because think about it. A ring... With an X in it. And then the center of the X could be a big tower that stretches to just towards the t surface of the water. And all the rest is shot, like goes down like uh, less tall than that. But there would be one tower at the very center that would come just almost to the surface of the water. We could even put a beacon through it. Like a beacon light. Yeah, that would be cool.
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna get the um. I'm gonna sketch, like literally sketch designs for what I want to build. Um. Honestly, the the idea I had for the tower was a bit like a mix of Cyrodiil, yes, and uh, Minas Ethel. I got freaked out by a hiss from my uh, fucking uh, parrot. Um, Minas Ethel uh, from, from uh, uh, or I guess it would be Minas Morgul uh, is how most of you would know it, uh, from, from Lord of the Rings. Sort of like a ringed tower city. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Like, rings, consecutive rings... And a tower. I don't know. We're going to get to it. Like, when we have the area, like, mined out and we see the room we have to build with, that's when we'll know. That's when we'll truly know. Anyway. Let's get segments started. Let's start with Andrew Clavin. One moment, chat. I'm just prepping the segment. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Get this up. All right. Pog. Nice. You all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. The Daily Wire is without a doubt the largest and most successful right-wing media pundit group on YouTube. They are based pretty much entirely online, and uh, they have a massive audience and a massive reach, and they are funded by billionaires. Billionaires that are not like barely billionaires, but comfortably billionaires. And the reason they're being funded by those billionaires is to preserve the best interest of said powerful billionaires. Now, this is no secret. This is not a bombshell I'm dropping on you. I just thought it'd be best to kind of give you a little, you know, for people who might be joining that are new, I thought it'd be best to give them a little bit of a uh, refresher on what the Daily Wire is, because they've got a whole lineup of hosts. And many of you know some of those hosts, but most of you don't know all of them. One of the lesser known hosts is Andrew Clavin. He's a bald, grody old man who you know probably best from when he went semi-viral back when The Witcher Netflix show first came out with its first season. There was a trailer where uh, Queen Calanthe was seen holding a sword for a second, and Andrew Clavin was spurned into a rant about how, quote-unquote, no woman ever could beat any man ever in a sword fight. Everybody jumped down his throat for this, for how wrong it was. Even people who nowadays are chud right-wing grifters like Shadowversity responded to him and pointed out how blatantly wrong he is and how much the art of sword fighting is not a primarily strength-focused sport and that there is a reason why there have been famous sword fighters who are women in history. There have been, um, who have be beat many men. Uh, because primarily when it comes to sword fighting, while strength is a big part of it, it's more about having, you have to have enough strength. If you have enough strength, having more strength than that doesn't help. From there, it's about technique, because it's about how you manipulate the weight of the blade, right? So, for example, a lot of very, um, like, ad advanced fencing and sword fighting techniques involve flicking the blade in a way that makes it so, like, the weight of, like, the hilt of the blade almost, like, transfers a whipping motion against your, uh, opponent's sword, knocking the- like, smacking the sword out of the way with a lot of force, 
uh, for how little weight like is going into it. Uh, and then you just open up their guard for a jab, you know? Like, it's that kind of stuff. Granted, you have to have a certain level of weight to be, or, or of strength to be able to flick that, you know, three pound sword, two pound sword, five pound sword, depending on what kind it is that way to, to break a guard. But once you have that much strength, being like a 200 pound man and being a 300 pound man of uh, muscle isn't going to make a difference. It's going to be your technique. And speed and other factors, footwork other such things but you know everybody jumped down his throat for this because it was a very blatantly misogynistic and just he was trying it wasn't that he was misogynistic that everyone was dunking on him it was that he was wrong blatantly and lying about like bl showing how wrong he was in a very stupid and open way to be misogynistic for the purpose of misogyny usually they're better at like hiding how stupid their arguments are for the purpose of misogyny racism etc but that time they were just so blatant with their stupidity and how mask off they were that everybody jumped down their throat i fenced for five years if clavin or any other untrained bladesman got into a fight with any junior female fencer the only thing they'll win is a swift funeral procession yeah i mean there are cases where like Inexperienced fencers can actually have the upper hand on an experienced fencer because they don't know what to do, and the experienced fencer is expecting moves from someone who knows what to do, like protecting themselves, etc. So, like, yeah. It depends, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. He's completely wrong. Anyway, uh, check this out, guys. Not Minecraft, the, uh, the screen here. This is Andrew Clavin's uh, new upload from a month ago. It has 15,000 views. Andrew Clavin has nearly a million subs, sorry, nearly 800,000 subs, is a Daily Wire host, and pulls viewership worse than me. This is the type of viewership I get on a video in a few days. He is falling off, because let's be honest, he is the least talented and least charismatic of the four stooges that uh, run this joint. With that said, uh, his channel's falling off, couldn't be happier to see it, but he made a new video called The Right Must Not Give In to Evil and Hatred. The Future of the Right, Andrew Tate and, and uh, Nick Fuentes. So for those that don't know, The Daily Wire does not play well with others, particularly um, since Ben Shapiro got like ambushed by grapers with Nick Fuentes in Florida. I think it was at like an Orlando TP USA whatever the fuck type event. Um... I forget exactly what the details are. It was like a TPUSA or a CPUSA. I forget what the title of those things are, because there's just so many acronyms they use. It was it was one of those events. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, Nick Fuentes and his Griper gang ambushed Ben Shapiro, started calling him Jewish and all that stuff. And so, you know, Ben Shapiro since then has not had a lot of love for, like, the more radical Nazi types online. Like, he enables them, he plays into their hand with his propaganda, but it is very clear he does not like them, personally, and he has said as much. And so he's also kind of trying to make Daily Wire move in lockstep with that. This is part of that schism in the right that kind of happened around the time of uh, Donald Trump doing Jan 6th. We're going to see. We're going to see how this goes. I, I'm pretty sure this video is going to be Daily Wire Andrew Clavin shitting on Andrew Tate and Nick Fuentes. We're going to be seeing some right-wing infighting here, so there's really nothing else to do other than sit back and enjoy it. Let's watch. I want to talk a little bit about the right and things that concern me on the right. Later this week, you will see a conversation I'm going to have with my son, Spencer Clavin, no relation, and Michael Knowles, you know, what, what I had to, I think I was begging me to come on, I had to do something. But uh, no, we're gonna talk about the future of the right. And right now, the future of the right is really up for grabs and it's very uncertain which way it's it's going to go. And I, I personally, at So what he's doing right now is trying to Talk about calmly and rationally a situation for Republicans that is terrifying. Um, the Republicans are afraid. They are really, really scared. And uh, rightfully so. Um, their policies are not popular with Gen Z. They are not popular with the youth. Their beliefs are not popular with the youth. 
people are not receptive to v the idea of voting Republican and each new generation or each new like batch of Gen Z and young people that hits voting age uh, like is getting more and more progressive and vote blue no matter who. With that said, the Republicans know that. It's why their rhetoric has started to move away from convincing people and particularly Zoomers, uh, why they should vote Republican or why they should support the Republicans. And instead, it has moved on to trying to convince uh, already existing Republicans and uh, potential legislators that the age for voting needs to be raised and that we need to do everything in our power to restrict uh, the ability uh, to vote for uh, uh, particular groups of people, such as kids, per such as people who live in low-income neighborhoods mm. basically voter disenfranchisement has become their new strategy now that they know winning fair and square or not even winning fair and square winning via cheating isn't uh <laughs> like w winning via soft cheating isn't uh, an option anymore now they've got to try to win like through full-on like obstruction this moment, and maybe I'll change my mind about this, I personally right now feel that Donald Trump is standing in the way of that future, even though he paved the way for that future. And I know that's tragic and I know that's annoying, but I feel that that's uh, where we are. Apart. But that's not the, the thing I want to talk about. What I want to talk about it's is the Trump when we see apart. the way that hate has deformed the left, we should look to ourselves as well. It's, a, it's just a, such an important thing to do. It is so easy. I remember sitting once and talking to a dentist. My favorite thing about conservative rhetoric is how very often they talk about how evil the left is, and then they describe things that they either want to do or have done or are doing that the left has never done. Like, it's always some projected ass shit, you know? I guess it's pretty funny. Evil. I mean, to be clear, Evil will always try to convince good that good is bad, you know? Um, I I'm pretty sure even Andrew Clavin would admit that. And then claim that that's me. <laughs> I don't know. Let's resume. I think it was, who was railing about how the left would not talk to right-wingers, how the left canceled right-wingers. And at the end of this conversation, he said, and, I, you know, I, so what I do now is if I find out somebody is on the left, I just won't let them into my practice. <laughs> I thought, well, you what? You just said that you've become what you beheld. And I know that feels like revenge, and I know that feels like if they're going to be dirty, we've got to be dirty. If they're going to be hateful, we've got to be hateful. I don't think so. So I... So essentially what uh, he doesn't like is the fact that so many conservatives out there, like in his audience and in his sphere, actually buy the bullshit. He doesn't like that. He doesn't like that so many people on the right in his sphere, or not in his sphere, but like that, that like support him actually buy the bullshit. And they actually have emotional attachment to this stuff and get mad uh, at the left for their cancellations or whatever, and, um, nice. Oh, yeah, I got that add-on, or that, uh, mod that changes how advancements display, so that's pretty cool. Whenever I get an uh, advancement on 2B now, it'll be, like, a big deal. It'll pop up like that. Um. What, I, what I'm pretty sure he's trying to do is convince people in his audience that are um, watching that are actually emotionally bought into this stuff who do things such as, oh yeah, well, if the left is going to ban people from their stuff, I'm going to ban the left from my stuff. He doesn't like that because it's not about actually principally believing in any of the stuff the right believes in for him and, and those that he works with. It's about winning. And if the right actually lives by their principles and emotionally believes the things that they believe, they won't win if they actually live by the principles they claim to live by. They have to, like, forego that and focus 100% on winning. So that's what the point of his video is going to be, is that having emotional, like, attachment to these issues and actually caring makes it harder for you to win. Makes it harder for the right to win. I've talked a lot about Andrew Tate, and the reason I've talked a lot about Andrew Tate is because I understand that 
masculinity and men are under attack and that they struggle with that. I, you know, some people like me don't care what people tell me about masculinity. The funny thing is, like, they've been saying this shit about masculinity being under attack for, like, literally since I was a teenage boy. Literally since I was a boy, they've been saying that manhood has been under attack. And it's like, now I'm a man, and it's like, wow, that was all bullshit. But now I'm looking and I'm, I'm watching as, like, a new generation of teenage boys are going through that same phase that I was going through back then. And the same types of dudes, sometimes in the same, in the case, sometimes in some cases, the same dudes are using the same rhetoric and the same talking points to convince them of the same, like, ideas that, just like I did, they'll eventually grow out of and realize we're all bullshit. I don't hear about me, uh, but a lot of other people are deeply affected by it. And as I've said before, I think what this really is an is an attack on femininity. But in order for them to get rid of femininity, they have to push women into men's spaces. And in order to push me women into... So he, he's trying to do some, like, pseudo-woke... Actually, my transphobia is in an effort to protect women because the end game of the left is actually to hurt women. And that's why the... Okay. We're the real feminists. Men's spaces, they have to make men less because women are not as good at being men as men are because women are women and men are so men. So true. Obviously, the opposite is also true. Men are not as good at being women. So true. A actually real. So true. That's the left's goal. We're, we're trying to replace cis women because we believe that men are better at being women than women. So real. Women as women are, but still, I think that the attacks on men have been very telling and have really hurt men a lot. And women By the way, conserv everything conservatives say is projection, so you know for a fact this is what he thinks. I guarantee you Andrew Clavin is a chaser, and I guarantee you he deep down thinks that, like, trans women are actually hotter than cis women, and the reason is because he thinks they're men still, and that men are better at being women than women are, is his logic. I guarantee it. That's how he... Wow, physics mod, you are just... You're, do... You're doing it. You're doing it. Um... Yeah, I think that's his logic. Sounds gay, not gonna lie. Oh yeah, it's definitely gay. Women don't know how to handle it's it because definitely now women that. think that they are supposed to be doing men's jobs and everybody's miserable. Everybody is sexually miserable. And so Andrew Tate comes along and he responds to this in uh, a hostile way, basically strutting around, uh, saying that his power depends on his ability to manipulate women. And recently he gave a lengthy interview to Tucker Carlson. You all know he's been charged with human trafficking and luring uh, women, forming an organized crime group, women, luring women into doing pornography and all this. And he did an interview with Tucker Carlson on Twitter that just got incredible ratings on Twitter. And it was in, in this interview, he was very plausible. He says, I'm strong, you know, that usual thing these guys have strong, so they want to destroy me. He So the, um, Info about this case is so out that it's actually insane. Um, Andrew Tate is fucked. Uh, he is absolutely fucked. He's doing his best to play the, um, to, to play like, oh, he'll, like, I'll be okay. Like, he is really trying to pretend like he's going to be all right and like he's going to get out of this and, you know, he's going to get vindicated. But, but guys, he's really not all right. He's really not going to be okay. Um, I highly recommend you look at some of the videos I've done where I react to um, Willie Mac show's coverage of uh, Andrew Tate's trial or Andrew Tate's case. The evidence, the fucking witnesses, the um, defend the, the people that are coming out and accusing him. Uh, he's got char several charges again of rape against minors coming out in this. It is so over. He's been bugged multiple times admitting. It, like, the, the prosecution has multiple bugged audio of him outright admitting in private uh, to the crimes that he's been accused of. He uh, Multiple bugged, in, uh, uh, leaked instances of texts and bugged uh, audio of him threatening the, um, the victims with violence if they uh, go to the police. It is so over. Every bit of, like, 
veneer of, oh, I'm all right. Oh, I'm going to be okay. Oh, they're just coming after me and I'm going to get out of this that he's been putting forward. It is all a front. He is dead terrified. He is shitting himself. He knows he is going away for a long time and that he does not have long as a free man. And he is trying to soak up as much success and happiness as he can while he is still a free man. Basically said, oh, no, you know, I, I don't do anything to women that I shouldn't do. Well, my friend Liz Wheeler, who I, I really am fond of, and I think she's just a very, very bright, incisive commentator. Uh, she tweeted out a compilation that she got off Mil Milk Bar TV on YouTube uh, showing the things that this guy has actually said over the years. Now, because of the books I've written, I have done a lot of research into prostitution and into pimping. And pimps all yeah. say certain things about how they manipulate women. No, we're getting an unironic like takedown of Andrew Tate by Andrew Clavin and Daily Wire here. This is because um, the, the right is schisming. Like, even though, as we speak, conservative propaganda from the Daily Wire still plays into the hands of, you know, like, it helps to get people towards being gropers and towards being Andrew Tate fans. Um, although I'd more so say being an Andrew Tate fan gets you closer to getting towards being a Daily Wire fan. Um, I feel like uh, most people would be more likely to start out with Andrew Tate and then get into Daily Wire, at least in that demographic that Andrew Tate's going for. But um, no, this is just clear evidence of like right wing infighting. And women can and we get to we enjoy all know, it. be manipulated. W women have a certain psychology that's shaped funnily enough like their body, sort of. It's shaped like a. What? A, a, a pizza with a wedge missing. Their, what? their psychology. What? I, please don't get be insulted by that. I think it, it's there so that they have a space for a baby to come into. Someone to give themselves to what? entirely who needs them entirely. And so it is a, a, a way to manipulate them to fill up that space and make them feel that you are the thing that they need and then get them to do what you want them to do. And all pimps know this, and all of them know how to suck a girl in. Uh, obviously, they go after trouble girls, girls who haven't had the love I thought that was say help suck them a girl negotiate off. this in, in their lives, and they know how to make them do what they want to do. And so Liz put out this compilation of some of the things that Andrew Tate has said, and it, it's, it, it's difficult to watch, but this is just some of it has said, and he talks about the fact that he has he sleeps with girls, get them, gets them to love him, and then manipulates them into doing pornography, for which, which he takes most of the money that he gets. And guys fall in love with these girls on OnlyFans sites, and they want to send money, and he takes that money. And then when they get out of line, he does what all pimps do with their prostitutes. He beats them. And here's just a little clip of this. I used sex as a tool to make women love me so they'd obey me and live in my house to make me money. I do that, love how, I like, uncool so Andrew Clavin is. Sense. Some ideas? As he tries to explain this. Run out my ideas. But he has no... He has no, like... That's right, lock the door, you f***. You knew I was gonna beat the f*** out of you. If you behaved, I wouldn't have to hit you, would I? Yeah, this is the footage. Don't. Get out. You can't stay in there forever. Once again, this is an IQ test, right? Because yes. any guy... So, like, yeah, um, like, those videos, uh, have been, like, leaking all over the internet. Like, the evidence videos of him, uh, threatening and as assaulting the victims. Um, the, like, it it's just, it's overwhelming how much is out and how fucked he is. All right, we need a we need a zombie villager. That's what I'm looking for right now. Like Andrew Tate is really really screwed. Um, I actually tried to find that exact video along with a couple others on stream recently, and I could not find that video. I could not find any of these videos I'd been referencing. But then I watched a Willie Mac show video about uh, you know updating on the um, on the trial on like the, the the criminal charges and everything, and he reveals that Andrew Tate has actually been paying a lot of money for a social media team he, uh, he has to scrub the internet of the clips and videos and VODs of him outright admitting um, to what he's been accused of. Because uh, most of the things that he's being charged with, he's outright admitted to doing online numerous times. And so I tried to find those clips, and he has actively been scrubbing them. So, you know what? If the Daily Wire wants to use their resources and money and power to dig up these like horrible clips of Andrew Tate that he's used his money and power to bury and scrub off the internet then uh and get out of the SEO then 
sh and out of Google search results, then I invite it. I fully invite it. Yeah, he sold a course on how to do this, by the way. Like, it, that, that is how fucking fried uh, Andrew Tate is. He's done. Guy who's bad with women would look at it and go, Tate's a woman beater. I say it. Look at the camera. This is what happens you don't listen. Look at the camera. Why are you getting hit? Why are you getting beaten? I don't listen. You don't listen. You. Do as I say. Any man who's actually a G, who's been around a little bit, would look at the video and go, man, she loves, she wants that. She wants that. So no. th 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 he, this guy's trash. He's trash. He's not an alpha male. He's a garbage guy. He's like, a, he's a rare he's Andrew a pimp, as low as you can go. And he knows things that work if you're bad. You know, it works. It works to tell an old lady you're going to give her, uh, you know, a, a Ponzi scheme works. Con games work on old people who don't know any better and they invest everything they have just because they do it doesn't mean you, you do it because it's wrong. Right. And this is the thing that if the right is going to be guided by reactionary hatred, then we are going to be the left. We're going to be no better than the left. The other guy like this I've talked about is Nick Fuentes, who made a speech recently. At Wait, does he... Does he not know what reactionary means by definition? Like the right is by definite by definition reactionary. Their enti the entire movement of conservatism is based around fighting against modernity and progression. You are either progressive or conservative. Those that those are the two diametrically opposed political uh uh you know, paradigms. You're either in favor of, of, of like, progressive whatever the fuck, or you're trying to harken back to something old from the past. There are many different political ideologies that do this, but that's the core of it. There are the people who are trying to achieve something new that hasn't been done before, usually better, and there are people who idealize the past and want to go back to that old thing that doesn't exist anymore. Damn, no zombie villagers today, chat. I might have to add them to my mob tracers. Oh, that really sucks. I really needed a zombie villager. Oh, we've got to wait until nighttime again. All right, might as well get a brewing stand and stuff ready in the meantime, because I do need to make the stuff to cure the zombie villager anyway. Um, I also don't have a name tag. Oh, shit. I don't have a name tag. I need to raid some dungeons. Um, Nether Fortress. I, we'll go to another fortress. I'll search the chests. There'll be a name tag. And I'll be able to get blaze rods for brewing. Yeah, that'll do it. Let me just look around these zombies really quick to see if last minute I can find zombie villager. Damn. Okay. Get fucked. Yoink. Okay. At the America First meeting, here is what he said. Meaning it might be a problem that the people that are running your base that are making yep. the movies your children watch. Ben Maybe Shapiro's gotten them they talking against Nick Fuentes now. Die? Yeah. Yeah. It's a big problem. It's a huge problem. We're in a holy war, and I will tell you this. Because we're willing to die in the holy war, we will make them die in the holy war. Oh no, Andrew Clavin thinks that like showing this clip. So what Andrew Clavin is doing right now doesn't work on his audience. For those that don't know, by the way, this video has a 50-50 dislike to like ratio. The one we're watching right now from Andrew Clavin, this video has a 50 50 dislike to like ratio and 15,000 views on Andrew Clavin's channel. Andrew Clavin, one of the four big Daily Wire hosts. That should put into perspective just how bad the situation is for right wingers when they decide, like, when for moderate, like, Daily Wire style right wingers, when they decide to say, hey, look, see this Nazi shit, this overt Nazi shit? That's bad. Insane amount of pushback. And they will go down. We have God on our side. 
and they will go down with their satanic master. They have no future in America. The enemies of Christ have no future in this world. That's right. He's talking about destroying the Jews. This is the other thing. that He's another clown that I hear right-wingers making excuses for. They are doing this to us, so we have to do that to them. Wait. Andrew Clavin, are you advocating for cancellation right now? Is that what you're is that what I hear right now, Andrew Clavin? Are you advocating for Nicholas J. Fuentes Dolphin to get canceled? Are are you in favor of cancel culture? Yes, we are doing Adventure Time after stream. Yes, yes. Are you in favor of cancel culture? My God! How could you, Andrew Clavin? Making... Like, he's advocating for cancel culture, for the right to cancel Nick Fuentes and uh, Andrew Tate. Hold on a sec, I gotta, I gotta look at my map. Okay, cool. If I go this way, there's another fortress. Nice. Yeah, this is cancel culture advocacy. This this hatred that distorts everything. It makes you turn away from your own values. It makes you stop doing your job. And in the end, it makes you do evil. And then once you do evil, you're caught. Once you do evil, the devil has you in his clutches because well, in order to get away from it, you have to admit what you did. And sometimes the damage is irreparable yeah. and the shame is incredibly painful. And so then you just keep going down that road. I think we are on a turning point in our society, and I think that the right is going to win. I don't know that because it's the future, no. and I don't know what the future is any more than anybody else, but I see signs of it, and that I'll talk about this another day. Looking. I'm running out of time here, but I see signs of it. The tide is turning. They have gone Oh, I too see far, signs of it. I'll talk about it later. we do work, and the things that we say are true, and as long as that remains true, then when we win back this culture, and I see it happening, I can see the first a cracks in the ice and it's yeah. so exciting and thrilling and encouraging yeah, you but can. i don't want us to lose our way i do not want us to become what we beheld believe me believe me we are not immune to hate we are not immune to corruption we are not immune to sin obviously that is the oh, truth you know. so you know it's not enough to beat them it's not enough to beat them we have to beat them and remain who we are and i just wanted to say that this is an important did i not tell you chat did I not literally tell you, chat, that his main argument against Andrew Tate and uh, Nick Fuentes is that they're they're too mean and that he believes in civility politics and their rudeness will make it harder for the right to win in the long run. And that this is all just uh, like they're upset over strategy because the Daily Wire's whole thing is making money by pushing right wing politics and helping like right wing politicians win. Nick Fuentes is an ideologue. Nick Fuentes believes in Nazism. He is a Nazi. He wants the like Nazis to 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 win. He wants he wants Nazi shit to be happening. He doesn't care about Republicans winning. He doesn't care about the Republican establishment getting by or concern like he cares about like exterminating the Jews. Um and so there's a, a fairly decent amount of god damn. There's a fairly decent amount of uh of um, ideological disagreement going on here between um, between not ideological disagreement I should say um, practical disagreement going on that is causing them to knock it along. Uh, it, it's just outright right wing infighting, like what you're used to seeing on the left, and it makes me happy. I love seeing it. Important thing to remember that that's who those guys are. They're trash, and we don't need we don't need them at all. They can just jump off the end of the ship, and we can sail Rare forward w. to something really better than we're in today. For more great content, like... Yeah, so basically his argument is that we can win without Andrew Tate and uh, uh, fucking uh, uh, Nick Fuentes. Unsubscribe to them and come watch The Daily Wire. That's basically the, uh, that's basically the gist of it, from my understanding. Yeah, pretty weak video, honestly. I mean, I actually do think it was a good takedown of Andrew Tate, um... Uh, not so much of Nick Fuentes, but I do think it was a good down, uh, takedown of Andrew Tate. I think chances are the majority of Daily Wire fans probably aren't okay with, like, outright, blatant, like, 
Here is a Romanian sex trafficker beating the woman who he is raped and sex trafficked and screaming, this is why you deserve to get hit. This is why you deserve to get hit. Tell me why I'm hitting you right now. Tell me why you deserve this. Like, I I'm pretty sure... I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, m even most Daily Wire fans aren't cool with that. <laughs> as demonic as Daily Wire fans tend to be, um, I don't think they're cool with that shit, generally. All right. Hold on a second. There we go. What do you guys think of that segment? I feel like it came out really good. What do you guys think? Great segment? Nice. Redcarp98, thank you for the $5 donation. Remember, guys, I always appreciate any donos, gifted subs, or hell, even just likes. If you just like the stream, it really helps the channel out a whole lot, so I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, Redcarp98. Said, glad I caught your stream, Zan. Keep up the good work. I hope you and your friends are doing well today. I am doing quite well. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, too. All right, let me get the next segment prepped. If you watch one second. So grab this. All right. Y'all know what to do when I say action, right? Three. Two. One. Action. All right, everybody. So the other day, I did live coverage of the Republican uh, debates, the Republican primary debates. Uh, there will obviously be more than just the one that I covered. They'll, they'll do this a few more times, I believe. Um, much like, uh, you know, the coverage I did for the Democratic general, or not general, not the general election, primary uh, election debates. Uh, pretty, pretty good stuff. It was pretty fun. The Republicans are demonic and crazy. Uh, all of their ads and all of their, like, merchandise shit that, that were running on there were, like, crazy stuff. Like, um, a lot of it was gold. A lot of it was trying to convince boomers to buy gold, weirdly enough. So that, that was definitely something. Um, just a weird amount of, like, buy gold, buy gold. Um, and then there was, of course, all the ads for, like, protect our nation per from the wokeness or whatever. That was all well and good, you know? The, the ads aren't really what we're there for. The debate itself, though, was very interesting. I found the debate very interesting because there was one candidate who came out of it probably looking the best. Really just one. And that would be Vivek... Ramaswamy. I, I think I pronounced his name right. Now, this guy has kind of exploded in popularity since debate night, mostly because nobody even knew who he was, really, um, prior to the debate. And he did pretty decent. He had a good amount of, like, uh, dunks on the other conservative figures there. He has a lot of energy. That's a big part of it. He's a younger guy on stage who has a lot more energy to dull out. And on top of that, uh, he's, like less establishment feeling but i have a feeling he is actually very establishment uh he's as much of a nut job as any of the rest in fact i think he might be even crazier he went on to call climate change man-made climate change a hoax so um oh he is establishment yeah that makes sense so yeah i it, by the looks of things it seems like the republican party may be gearing up to make uh vivek ramaswamy their new desantis figure what I mean by that is, prior to this debate, DeSantis was the Republican Party's golden boy. Um, they were really trying to get Donald Trump out of favorability with the electorate, and instead, uh, you know, just kind of make it the DeSantis party instead, a much easier puppet to control. Okay, my nose is just uncontrollably itching, like right here on the corner, for no reason. Um, they're trying to make him like, oh my god, and it comes right back the instant I stop. Okay. Um, it seems like they're trying to make, uh, uh, like, DeSantis their new golden boy 
but that wasn't really working out. So now, by the looks of things, they're trying to do it with uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, or at least they're gearing up to do this. So we're going to see how that goes. But with all that said, uh, let's let's get let's get right into it. Let's let's get into uh, what I wanted to talk about. Basically, um, I want to discuss how this guy's popularity might be a bit of a problem. I don't think he's going to beat Trump, but I do think it's worth talking about how much of the right online, I think, is going to start embracing this guy as like... Do you guys remember uh, a Andrew Yang's rise to prominence where he just kind of materialized out of nowhere and then all of a sudden all of the most insufferable people, left and right, were supporting him? That's basically what's happened with Vivek Ramaswamy. He's basically had the Yang effect, ha effect happen to him. He is literally just the new Andrew Yang. I'm, I'm not kidding. He is the new, like, weirdo populist candidate that's not really a populist. Um, yeah, Jeb Bush was, was like the old Yang. Like, Jeb was the, was the old uh, uh, Andrew Yang. So, like... This this is not like a new thing. There has always been like a a uh, uh, title that has to be passed down with each new election of the goofy ish uh, candidate that people don't really take seriously, but grows a bit of a cult following that slowly dies off till it's nothing over the course of the next election. Uh, it happened to Jeb Bush. It happened to Andrew Yang. Now it's going to happen to Vivek Ramaswamy. So let's talk about it. Let's enjoy this guy's rise to prominence while it lasts because i promise you in four years vivek ramaswamy is not going to be a name that you remember i i swear to god you are not going to remember this guy's name in four years so let's get right into it oh gotta gotta switch it on yeah so apparently uh uh msn msnbc did a uh, segment going over some of the more insane things that Ramaswamy has said and believes. So let's check it out. Watch the first Republican presidential debate this week. There's no doubt you took note of the young, brash candidate with a big smile at the center of the stage, 38-year-old Vivek Ramaswamy. He attended Harvard oh, it's and Vivek. Yale Law School, where he made millions before he graduated by getting involved in biotech investing. As the New York Times reports, Ramaswamy's talent in his biotech career was for rallying investors, drumming up hype around a business venture to raise money from those investors. He's an investor. It means he had money, and then he invested that money smartly, and then it made him a lot of more money. That's what they mean. It, it means that he gambled and he won. Investors. He did it quite successfully multiple times, getting multi-million dollar payouts for himself along the way. Ramaswamy gained political notoriety when he released his first book called Woke Inc., which focuses on his theory that, quote, okay. woke politics has infiltrated the business world and that woke capitalism is a scam of liberal invention costing Americans money and their values. And this week, just six months after Ramaswamy announced his campaign for president, he capitalized on his first time in the national spotlight. He was the most Googled name during the debate. His campaign reported that in the hours after the debate, More he received nearly half a million dollars from donors. His campaign manager told the New York Times that number neared $650,000 within 24 hours. Ramaswamy's campaign slogan is the word truth. Not to be confused with the former president's social media site, Truth Social, Ramaswamy speaks about many He's of his ideas Trump's invoking a little bit. the word truth as if, as if his ideas are indisputable, black and white facts. He touts what he calls his 10 principles of truth on social media. So, yeah, that, that's that's one of the biggest common through lines with conservatives. And it's so common that sometimes I don't even point it out. But I think it honestly does bear. Um, I think it bears uh, uh, like some level of of like, hey, like we should point this out. If you see a political pundit who is constantly, constantly constantly talking about how they are a truth sayer and you can only trust them they are trying to brainwash you okay any honest figure such as myself will tell you that any info i give you you can find anywhere else you can google 
any of the topics I talk about. I encourage you to do so. I like when you guys correct me on something if I'm wrong or give me extra additional info usually to help back up my points that I didn't remember to say at the give at like that given time. That's always nice. I enjoy that. Conservatives never encourage this. You'll notice that Republican, um, or not Republican, conservative commentators, reactionary pundits, make it as hard as physically possible for their audience to fact check what they say. They, they talk about things very vaguely. They'll tell a story or an anecdote, but they'll not even like link the anecdote itself, like, like a link to the story, because they don't even want you looking into that. They just want you to take everything they say at face value and trust them, bro. Um, because they're a truth teller. They say the truth. That is a massive red flag. And it always will be. No matter who's saying it and who's doing it, that should always set off the, uh, you know, that should always set off a few alarms. Can we not get a single zombie villager? I, I, it's crazy and on the campaign trail and on his website where he displays the list under a quote by Thomas Jefferson. We hold these truths to be sacred and undeniable, as if Thomas Jefferson wrote these words about these particular truths, some sort of an endorsement from Thomas Jefferson. In fact, he recited the list this week on the debate stage. Listen. God is real. There are two genders. Fossil fuels are a requirement for human prosperity. Reverse racism is racism. An open border is not a border. Parents determine the education of their children. The nuclear family is the greatest form of governance known to man. Cap so, like, he literally just goes on a rant where he just lists every populist conservative position that is winning right-wingers over online right now. Like, he, he just, like... He just rants it out. He just he just rants. Oh no, this is gonna trigger a raid. Fuck. Oh, this is bad. This is not good. Okay, I'm I'm just gonna wait out the raid. I'm just gonna wait out the raid, cause I need to kidnap these villagers and take them home. Alright, get inside. Capitalism lifts us up from poverty. There are three branches of government, not four. And the U.S. Constitution... Yeah, he, he's literally just spewing every buzzword, talking point, popular, like, make a TikTok about this topic and you'll get 100,000 subscribers, uh, like, bullshit uh, phrase. Constitution, it is the strongest guarantor of freedom in human history. That is what won us the American Revolution. That is what will win us the revolution of 2024. Now, behind the smile and the charismatic quips are some ideas and beliefs that are really quite alarming. Vivek Ramaswamy has peddled dangerous conspiracy theories about January 6th, claiming it was driven by excessive government censorship. He pushed as recently as this month the conspiracy... He's saying everything he possibly can to appeal to right-wing nutjobs. He's doing everything right. I mean... Will he be able to beat Trump? Uh, probably not. Almost certainly not. Um, even if he continues with this, like, rocket fo propel rocket propelled forward success. Um, but, like, I mean, he has the points. This is the kind of stuff that your average conservative, like, voter thinks they care about. Stuff like there being only two genders, God being real. Like, they... Part of his pitch there is that I, as president, will ensure this country is not run with separation of church and state. Because um, remember, Christians cannot abide by an America that has separation of church and state. Because to them, Christianity is 100 million percent real. And the existence of, of like, separation of church and state is satanic and evil. So they have to destroy that separation, which means destroying your rights. By the way, Vivek is Hindu. Oh, yeah, no, like, there are tons of conservative figures that are not even, like, like for example, Ben Shapiro and uh, Dennis Prager are Jewish, and yet everything they say and advocate for is just Christian nationalism. Conspiracy about 9-11, suggesting it may have been an inside job by the U.S. government. His campaign claims he was misquoted, but the recently released audio recording of the incident sure makes it sound like he was, in fact, pushing the conspiracy. And then there are his policy ideas. He believes the United States should drop, uh, stop providing aid to Ukraine immediately, that Ukraine should concede yep. the Donbass region to Russia. 
He wants to raise the voting age to 25 unless young people serve in the military or pass a test. He so that's his, um, that Ramaswamy is uh, actually a, a uh, supporter of that policy I was just mentioning in my previous segment. The right now recognizes they don't have the ability to win elections going forward, especially as Gen Z, more of Gen Z gets to voting age. Um, cause Gen, like Gen Z is just so overwhelmingly more progressive than even Gen X and especially more so than millennials. And so, um, uh, uh, the new policy the right is pushing for is trying to raise the voting age to 25. So 18 year olds, 19, 20, 21, 23, and 24 year olds can't vote anymore. Um, or require you to, uh, to pass a test. Like a like a, a test that would guarantee that I guess that you are more likely to vote Republican or serve in the military, which would also be more vote likely that you're to vote Republican. I mean, we know the statistics on military families being Republican. So basically, they're trying to like make the system so that more people who can vote are Republicans and more people who can't vote are Democrats. It's just like he, he is running on a policy of we are going to make it so Democrats can't vote. Like, that is his policy position he is running on. He's pledged to abolish key government agencies like the FBI, the Department of Education, and the IRS. He said that the climate change agenda is a hoax and that increased investment in fossil fuels are a, necess a necessity for human flourishing. He has promised to pardon Donald Trump on his first day no in one office, can. and it doesn't end there. Just no yesterday, Ramaswamy said he would like Elon Musk as an advisor when he wins the presidency. And then Jesus. he likened the progressive Democratic representative Ayanna Press. Okay. Guys, I want you to imagine the actual apocalypse that would occur if this guy won. Like, I want you to actually imagine the unironic, legitimate apocalypse that would occur if this guy won the presidency. Like, eliminating every fossil, like, non-fossil fuel program and heightening fossil fuel usage. Um, like, destroying the IRS so no, there's no tax programs anymore. Like, uh... Jesus Christ, did you see Shu's fascist boyfriend was dick riding Vivek after the debate? Yeah, no. I, I guarantee you Shuan had probably heard everything Ramaswamy had to said, say and was like, whoa! Yeah. No, like, he's saying everything that's meant to appeal to the worst possible people. Ashley and the activist and author Ibram Kindi, two grand wizards of the Ku Klux Klan. He just said two people. Two black progressive people are like grand, grand wizards of the Ku Klux Klan. And by the way, he said that climate change refugees, of which at last count there was an estimated 20 million, simply don't exist. And he believes social welfare programs are incentivizing young women to abandon the idea of a nuclear family and has convinced them to avoid traditional marriage. Ramaswamy has been gaining on DeSantis in recent polls, though still trailing Trump by about 50 points. He was cheered and booed and faced heavy criticism and gained lots no. of new donors. True, his presidential bid is still a very long shot, but eyes wide open as we see a brand new conspiracy theorist start taking the spotlight. Yep, a new conspiracy theorist. I like how they frame it, too. Not as a new, like, candidate, not as a new... Republican nominee, a new conspiracy theorist. Because that's who he is. He's a conspiracy theorist, or he probably doesn't believe any of this shit. The way that he said it, like, there are two genders, God is real, uh, fossil fuels are, are what we're going to use, uh, climate change isn't, is a hoax, like, he goes on, like, the list of, those are not things he actually believes. He does not believe that perfect list of lined up ideas that are just populist bullshit positions popular online he's a con man trying to ride off the popularity of trump and you know he's doing that because he's also promising to um uh pardon trump's federal charges he's under right now even though literally no one can do that uh so yeah it's uh he's not a good guy don't vote for the guy if you were thinking about doing it uh for some reason i feel like that segment was shorter but i think it was a good one what do you guys think of that one? I feel like that segment was pretty good. Good seggy? Hell yeah. Alright, let me get the next one ready.
Can I just wait out the raid? It started on me when I really didn't want it to, and I just want to get a villager back to... Um... I really just want to get a villager back to uh, my grinder thing. So will that... Will the raid just stop? If I just wait it out? The pillager raid? Uh, okay. Zan just banging out segments rapid fire to get to adventure time? Well, normally, this is how long my segments would usually go. I'm just avoiding stun locking because I am excited to do the watch party. But frankly, if I'm being honest with you guys, I do think my streams are better when I've got something excited that I'm excited to do after stream. Because it makes me, yes, the stream ends up being shorter, but I feel like it makes me stun lock less and just get to the good stuff, you know? Would you guys agree? I, I think so. You'll be on the watch party, but you won't be able to talk? Okay, Apilla. Uh-oh. Oh, what the fuck? Oh my god, they opened the door. Fuck. Stupid fucking villagers opened the door. Oh my god. They almost got me killed. Okay. Make a boat. I'll place this here. Hopefully some villagers manage to survive the raid. Imagine it's over and there's literally not a single villager left alive or something. Oh my god, they might have killed every villager. Oh, they totally did, didn't they? Oh my god, they totally killed every villager. I'm free camming around right now and not a single villager is alive. The raid happened when I got to the village and every villager died. Because their, their AI is so dumb they couldn't just stay in the house. So I'm just here for no reason. Okay. Time to just fucking book it back home until the next sun night time, and then I'm gonna add um, zombie villager to my tracers, so maybe I'll pick one up on the tracers as I fly around. Um, and I'll also have to make a brewing stand with some weakness potions because we're gonna have to cure a zombie villager then. That's what I thought would have to happen. That whole village got wiped out within seconds by the raid. There's no way to prevent it, no way to stop it. I had Bad Omen for, like, two hours. Um, so it would have been after stream by the time I could have gone to the village. Uh, fuck, dude. God, that system sucks. Like, I get why it's the way it is, and it's good for the farm, too, but God, does it suck to start, dude. God, does it suck to start a raid farm sometimes. Drink milk, it gets rid of the status effect. No cows. There's not a cow in sight. Also, I've lost the status effect, which actually sucks. Because I need the status effect to start the farm. <laughs> so I'll have to find a... Uh, like, there's a point where I'm gonna have to find pillagers and kill them so I can get Bad Omen just to start the farm. It's a bit of a pain, but once we got it all started, it'll be a lot faster and more convenient. And it'll be very worth it. And the XP will repair my gear in seconds, and it'll be great. Oh, it's already nighttime at least. Might be able to catch, uh... Here, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bury myself really fast in the in the ground. Then I'm gonna add zombie villager to my tracers. There we go. So I should detect them on my tracers now. Okay. Ugh. All right, let's villager hunt while, uh, for a minute, and then we'll start the next segment. Uh, a quick ten minutes of villager hunting. Ugh.
Oh, uh... I keep getting, uh, stun-locked out of my sprint by the damage. Okay, so now I should just be able to get home, get some fireworks, fly around a little bit, and they'll pop up on my tracers super easy. It'll be, it'll be real easy. It'll be really cool. I'm officially at the halfway point. Pog. Whatever you do, just don't, <laughs> don't indicate even a hint as to where we are. I don't even want them to know, like, what axis we're on. I assume you wouldn't do that. Just, just feel more comfortable if I say it. <laughs> Okay, those are pillagers, not um, zombie villagers. Ooh, that's a zombie villager, maybe. Although those might also be pillagers from a previous raid attempt. Hmm. Well, let me free cam down there. It would be a pain if these were... Yeah, these are just pillagers. Okay. All right, let me, let me get back home. And we're going to fly around a little bit. And then hopefully... Ha! Do you know what just happened there? That skeleton hit me and it was already low health. And the thorns on my armor killed it. So it shot me once and just died instantly. From the thorns on my armor. Okay. So really fast, I'm going to craft some uh, fireworks. Uh, you know, I'll put a uh, crafting table down here because it'll be handy. Is there a center to this room? Yes, there is. This is the center. Crafting table floor. This is my first time in survival Minecraft actually using elytra and rockets. I've never gotten elytra in survival Minecraft, especially not in single player, um, and like used them like this. Um, I never really used them before this update either, because I didn't really know how to use them very well. All right, time to hunt some zombie villagers. Oh, we don't have a name tag. It'll despawn. Gah. Wait, it wouldn't despawn if we cure it, though, right? Oh, but it will despawn if we don't cure it. We gotta get back home immediately to make the brewing stand and everything. I hate to say it, but it's almost like if we're lucky, we won't find one tonight. God, how rare are they? Ah, there we go. Oh, it's underground? Oh, okay, went on the surface. Oh, it's also underground. That's a pain in the ass. Uh, well, actually, it's not that pain big of a pain in the ass because we don't have to cover it up. Okay, go ahead and blow up, buddy. Go ahead and blow up. Do it. Let's do it. Or don't. God, creepers are so inconsistent with whether or not they'll actually explode. It's so bizarre. Okay. So I'm assuming there's a cave here, right? Oh, it's next to a fucking creeper. That is the worst. That is the worst of all the mobs for it to be right next to. No, I don't want to hit it too! Oh my god, sweeping edge, no! Okay, we've got to- oh no. Okay, we gotta- Oh no, 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 okay. Okay, it survived, it survived. Okay, I'll let it hit me a few times. Oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. It's not letting me place the boat. Oh, we got another zombie on us. And I've got sweeping edge. Fuck. Uh, uh, uh. There we go. We, we got it. Okay. Now we just need mobs not to spawn literally in our assholes for half a second. Which is actually a lot to ask for on 2B these days. Okay, I've got like seconds to get this guy sealed in before mobs start spawning. Oh, baby zombie. Fuck. Okay, so mobs are spawning on me again. So for those who don't know, Tubi's um, mobs don't despawn boats. Good. So apparently uh, Tubi's mob spawn rates are insane. So like 
you've got seconds to uh to do something at night if it's not lit up before mobs are on you. Got him. Okay, he's safe. We have him. He is safe. He is there. He is safe. There's no taking that away from us. We fucking have him. Is it be uh, because it's hard difficulty? Uh, it is on hard, yes. But also because House has gotten a plug-in that increases mob spawn rates. Oh, lightning. Jesus, that was natural lightning. That went out, right? Hopefully the rain puts that out. Okay. Whew. What if it despawns? It won't. It's in a boat. It won't despawn in the boat. Okay. Now we can do our video. We found our zombie villager. Time to craft up some weakness potions. Uh, a splash potion of weakness. I've already got the golden apple we need. We'll cure it up. We'll ride the boat uh, back to where it needs to go when the sun goes up, obviously. So we're not getting attacked and it'll be all good. Okay, let me get the next segment up. All right, everyone, y'all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. All right, everybody. So there's a YouTuber who I've covered for, like, on and off just a couple years now. His name's Yellow Flash 2 He's a, like, quartering clone channel, a no-bullshit clone channel that talks about, you know, insert media being woke. This trend has gotten more and more popular over the last couple years, as I predicted correctly, by the way. Um, and recently, he's been getting absolutely dunked on on Twitter uh, because he decided to start a crusade against Miles Morales. Now, much like every other, you know, right-wing, anti-woke YouTuber of this type, he pretends not to be racist, but then he got to, like, a certain level of popularity where I guess he felt, like, comfortable enough going mask off. So he started a campaign on Twitter of, um, oops, of claiming Miles Morales is, or sorry, Miles Morales is Miles Morales, Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Um, claiming that Miles Morales is not Spider-Man. Now, for those that don't know... Um, Miles Morales is Spider-Man, um, just in, in the story of Spider-Man, he is Spider-Man. He is also Miles Morales, because that's his name. Peter Parker is also Spider-Man, it's a title. And, um, Miles Morales is also, as you can see, black, as opposed to, uh, Peter Parker, who is white. And so, the right essentially has created a culture war issue out of... Um, the existence of Spider-Man uh, as Miles Morales. And they like to claim that he is not the real Spider-Man. And uh, it's been a long-term thing. It is a very, very obviously racist because, I mean, they are both Spider-Man. Yellow Flash is just more comfortable being racist now, I guess. I, I don't even know. So he made this tweet and ended up getting massively ratioed on Twitter, like overwhelmingly ratioed on Twitter. By um, many people, including Jolly J, who said, At this point, I wouldn't care if Gwen Stacy became Spider-Man after a transition, just as long as it pissed this motherfucker off, LMFAO. People are genuinely fed up with this guy's grift, and they have been for a while. He's never been particularly great at this grift, to be honest, considering uh, one of the, the first video I ever covered him for was uh, him complaining about... Uh, 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 Doom Eternal being woke. He was complaining about Doom Eternal being woke because it had female demons back in, like, 2019 or whatever. That was the first time I ever covered him. So, the guy's been a lol cow in my ma my mind for a long time. Oh, Vosh Raid! Welcome, everybody! Thank you for the raid, Vosh. I appreciate it, man. Um, hey, enjoy your time here. Uh, make sure to come to the website. The website, the real chat. My website chat is the real chat. It's the chat you see on screen. It's the chat I read. It's it's where the real, the real stuff is happening. So come over here. Uh, anyway, um, Yellow Flash Two has been like a long time lol cow in my mind, but he exploded in popularity a few months ago when Asmongold started reacting to his videos on stream. 
Asmongold has gotten notably more conservative lately with his uh, content coverage, and a big part of that has involved cover, uh, covering or watching, reacting to right-wing anti-woke content creators on stream. And one of the content creators who he gave a massive shout-out to several times has been Yellow Flash 2, this guy. Uh, so this guy's channel has blown up recently due to several shout-outs from Asmongold, who's been dick-riding him uh, pretty hard. That said, um, following those tweets from Yellow Flash 2, uh, he ended up responding in the form of a YouTube video. And uh, this is the title and thumbnail of said video that we're about the, to be watching. Miles Morales fans have a complete meltdown, cope hard that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, I, I guess is the rest of it, and they can't stand him. And then the thumbnail is Miles Morales, Spider-Man, but photoshopped in is Rob Robert Downey Jr. in blackface. Um, yeah, so for those that don't know, a lot of the humor of uh, this type of YouTuber is just like blackface in the thumbnail. Like, uh, No Bullshit does it, uh, Geeks and Gamers does it, Nerdrotic does it, um, The Critical Drinker has done it, I'm pretty sure. Like, they, they just kind of throw some blackface in the thumbnail and call it a day. And it's really funny for them. I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to be responding to it. Let's check it out. Let's see what he has to say to defend himself against the, uh, the Miles Morales fans and just, frankly, normal people that have been dunking on him for the last, uh, for the last day and a half or so. Let's go. Oh, it unsized my, uh, my thing. There we go. We've got to talk about Miles Morales. Oh, yeah, for those that don't know, this guy, uh, drunk records. This guy's like one of those loser, like conservative uh, dudes who's like in his 30s or whatever, who's like an active alcoholic and just drinks all day and literally uploads constantly drunk. Like, y you know the type, right? Like, we, we cover these types pretty often on the channel. Like, the quartering is also an alcoholic. Um, no bullshit was a big time alcoholic as well. Like, a lot, of the, a lot of these types have, like, big-time alcohol issues and are usually, like, actively slurring their speech in their videos. Um, which is crazy because, like, you'd think you could at least handle a buzz if you just, like... I get having more fun recording a video or live streaming if you're a little bit, like, not sober. That's why I like to smoke weed. But I don't get absurdly high. I used to, and it was bad for me, and it was bad for streams, and so I moderate myself, and I got better at it. But this guy is, like, actively slurring his speech in his videos from how, like, beyond buzzed he is when he records. That or he genuinely just sounds that dumb and drunk all the time. The second Spider-Man, because there's two of them running around, which doesn't make too much sense. This guy's whole branding is named after the Flash. There are multiple Flash. Flashes, Flash, Flashes. Like, Barry Allen was not even the first Flash, right? Like, what? How, how is somebody who's... who's He... His branding is the Flash, and he just said it makes no sense that there are two Spider-Men. This guy... These guys are the most fake comic book fans ever. Yeah, also, imagine saying it makes no sense that there be two of a hero at once. In, in any medium having to do with hero stuff. Like, that is the whole point of comics, is finding an excuse to clone and have there be two of the same hero at once. I still think he was a better character on screen. when he had his own universe instead of sharing one with Peter, because at that point he was his own Spider-Man. But a little bit of... That was because of Mark... That was because of, like, legal shit that that was the case. Miles Morales was always supposed to be in the multiverse of Marvel Comics. Yes, he had his own sub-universe, but within the story of uh, Marvel Comics, it has always been the idea that he would branch into the main universe for all sorts of different storylines. There's literally a Spider-Verse. <laughs> yeah. Like, nitpicking aside on this guy, I don't even really mind him that much. 
He's been around for a long time, and I do see popularity. Okay, so he's going the quartering route right now of saying, I'm going to be honest, I don't even really care. Like, I, I really don't care, guys. I promise. I swear to God, I don't care. It's these triggered lefties that care. I promise. Yeah. Hold on. So that is the brewing stand recipe. Okay. In the character, people do like him, at least in other forms of entertainment outside of the comic books, because his comic books... By the way, there was a time where Asmongold was reacting to, like, two of this guy's videos a day on stream. He might still react to his content on stream, for all I know. But, like, this guy is so boring and just monotone and he has nothing of value to say and yet he's blown up in popularity well he did blow up in popularity now he's dropped down quite a bit because like he got the aswin gold shout out but then the hype from that died down very fast like very very fast oi zandy playing the minecraft i wonder when we gonna get hightail finally also hi sorry i've not been around uh been really busy with stuff yeah welcome rain cloud thank you for stopping by yep hightail will Hopefully we'll be getting Hightail in the next year or two. That's what I'm... Like, I think we'll probably get it in 2024, but I'm betting 2025 because it's not coming any later than 2025. Have never sold very well. And that's a fact. You can go back and look at the data when Show they it. used to actually collect the data through Diamond. That's the distributor for the comic books at the time. His book is... Wait, so he's trying to claim... That Miles Morales has never sold well as a comic book. But they haven't collected the data since before the the existence of Into the Spider-Verse. They did this with Captain Marvel, too. Because for those that don't know, like, the whole point of the MCU was that they were, at least earlier on, was they were taking relatively, not unpopular, but C-list, B-list characters within Marvel and giving them, like, A-list attention. Like, Spider-Man was the Marvel hero before the MCU started. Spider-Man was the Marvel hero in the Hulk. Spider-Man and the Hulk were, like, the Marvel heroes before um, the MCU started, I would say. They were probably the two most recognizable. Um, uh, and Captain America... Yeah, like... Like, Captain America was pretty recognizable, too. Like, Iron Man really wasn't that recognizable before, right? Like, the whole idea was you take a new or old forgotten character with the MCU, or that was the idea. You write them a good story in live action that gets the fans of the MCU to go check out the comic stories of that character and learn about the comic character. Like, that's, that's, that's the thing. That's what you do. That's that that was the whole thing. So now he's trying to say that I, I don't even know, dude. Like obviously Miles Morales comic book runs would have had a much bigger uh jump in popularity post uh uh into the Spider-Verse and especially post uh across the Spider-Verse. Okay, fer fermented spider eye. What? That is so bizarre. Okay. Has been canceled multiple times and rebooted, but that every comic I book character has a large part in that is due to the fact that uh, mainstream comics just aren't really a big thing anymore, and most of the people that work in that area don't have a lot of talent. But you put him in video games. So for, for those that don't know, one of the big talking points from these grifters lately has been that the writers, animators, artists, etc., working on, like, mainstream comics, mainstream movies, etc., they are the fault. Unironically, they're against the writers' strikes, the writers' and actors' strikes, and when they make, uh, for example, a really good example of this has been, um, lately they have been really, really going against game devs game developers the developers since Baldur's Gate 3 came out right-wing pundits have been making videos and as well as your normal like uh, gaming content creators have been playing into it as well um, about how 
uh, game devs suck so much nowadays that they're whining and complaining that the standards of Baldur's Gate 3 shouldn't be what you expect. They're, they're like shitting on devs and saying, look at this, this is the devs admitting that they're so untalented and they're so bad at their jobs that the Baldur's Gate 3, uh, not to expect anything as high quality as Baldur's Gate 3. Um... And so you, you got videos from Asmongold, uh, The Quartering, Geeks and Gamers, Nerdrotic, uh, uh, Yellow Flash 2, um, all of these like gaming and right-wing channels all talking about how uh, these devs nowadays are so tal untalented and so lazy and so woke that uh, they're apt telling you not to expect anything as good as Baldur Baldur's Gate 3 again. When what really happened was Baldur's Gate 3 has had such a massive team and so much time and money put into it that to expect it as the standard for AAA games these days would be unrealistic and you'd just be disappointing yourself. That is what uh, a bunch of game devs actually said. Um, but yeah, basically the new movement within the right lately in this area has been to attack game devs as lazy, woke, untalented and undeserving of pay and deserving of very hard crunch time and getting fired frankly um they're against the writers strikes and the actors strikes for all these reasons yeah and in spider-verse movies he actually does pretty well probably because the people that make those are much more talented than uh, the people in the comics but anyway there is a strange thing on twitter because I've I've never seen this happen with any other character. Okay, you can you can dump on any character, even at the height of the Captain Marvel stuff. People would come out to defend Brie Larson, not Captain Marvel. They were defending Brie Larson, not Captain Marvel. Well, because you're being racist. You made the tweet because you were trying to be sly and racist about, like, racist and sly about it. People realized it and were like, oh, you're cringe, and you got ratioed. He's, he's literally, he's rambling, he's rambling nonsense because he got ratioed on Twitter. Yes, that is the whole video. This video has fi over 50,000 views, by the way, and this channel has hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And has been shouted out by the likes of Asmongold. And is reacted to regularly by Asmongold. This guy gets a consistent flow of subscribers from Asmongold reactions to his videos. But this, though, it's it's really strange. Like, if you just go on to Twitter and say, Miles Morales is Miles Morales and Peter Parker is Spider-Man, you will get instant engagement. And I'm not kidding. I've been doing this for a while now. And I like to do it every one. I've, I like to do it every couple of months or so just to see if it still works. And it sure as hell does still work. So, yeah, you're getting bullied on Twitter, dude. You, you did it. What an epic troll. You got ratioed and everyone's making fun of you and getting way more likes on their posts, making fun of you than you got on your post. You owned them. You, you epically trolled them. Yeah, you won, you won that internet interaction. This tweet has been seen 7.1 million times. It's got 7.1 million impressions. So I want to thank all these people on Twitter because now I have enough impressions to get the subscription button <laughs> because I've deleted... My Twitter, my Twitter posts, I used to... Okay, so he's doing, like, the grift thing. So, for those that don't know, um, all these content creators are, like, literally soulless grifters. And so, they will literally just shamelessly say, Heh, well, you think you owned me? Well, I don't actually care about any, any of this, and I'm actually just in it for the money. They'll just, like, admit they're grifters as, like, their response to getting owned. Go through and just have them automatically delete... Because Twitter wasn't monetizing, I so I, I just delete all my posts because, I mean, it just keeps things a little bit more clean, and also it stops mass reporting, but that also took away all of my impressions, so I wasn't quite at the threshold that you need for the subscription thing, which I think is now 5 million views. They lowered it. This tweet alone gets me that. <laughs> So after they're done reviewing my application, I should be able to get the subscription thing. I'm already monetized on, on views. 
So I'm curious to see what this payout is. I don't know if you get paid weekly or monthly with Twitter. I, I just got the first one on Saturday, but I like how it's just him talking about getting weird, paid and like, making money group that goes around and they must search miles Morales every day. That's the only <laughs> thing that I can think of because he is instantly coping so hard, right? People now. will come in and start calling you racist and yell at you and, and get mad and they start going all over your posts. What I do as soon as I do this post. So I made this post yesterday at 10, 12 AM. I quickly muted the post instantly and, uh, went about my day, <laughs> come back. People are posting like uh... multiple things. One guy's like, Oh, ooh, Barry Allen is Barry Allen. Like I give a shit I'm trying to go on the flash mantle thing. I don't even give a shit that miles Morales is a is a Spider Man. He is a Spider Man. He's not the Spider Man though. That will always be Peter Parker. I just well, like trolling and having fun on here because. It okay, so this has literally just devolved to. He's mad coping now. I I don't know what to say other than this is embarrassing. This is just embarrassing for him. He is at, he is just embarrassing himself here. Gets guaranteed engagement you see all this engage this is all engagement 2127 likes 1203 quotes i've picked up followers all okay, kinds we, of stuff we, we get it it's, You're a it's, grifter. it's wild okay. and it works for everybody yeah it we works get it. for everybody see dan vask here says here it comes he posted this like 10 minutes after I posted this post, and look at this. He's already got 70,000 views on his tweet. I don't know what it is. It's really strange, and I'm not even kidding. I did a whole bunch of posts just seeing if I can farm farm this a little bit. And here's one right here. Farm it. I posted it. So for those who don't know, he's not actually going to make any money off of uh... – off of uh, the YouTube or uh, Twitter subscriptions thing, really. Um, for those unaware, it's actually like a pithy payment, and there are tons of people reporting that they haven't even actually gotten paid. Um, there was also like, there's like big drama happening with that right now that might result in that program getting shut down um, and getting like losing its funding due to the fact that Elon Musk ended up re adding a, um, a guy who was posting child sexual assault material on Twitter there like it, it's been a it's been a something you know but i mean i do like that his like response to getting owned is like ah well you see i actually don't care about any of this and just do it for money so your engagement makes money for me so in reality i win okay if it is all about money then i mean i won't argue with you on that point because it is very much all about money for you people this six hours ago. Uh, Spider-Verse spo spoilers. At the end of the movie, Scooby Spider-Man uncovers the truth. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. <laughs> it's already got 10,000 impressions. His audience uh, is mad. I retweeted this one. This they is from like Sierra video. Whiskey. That's funny. 4,000 impressions. Did this one. Even the Target toy section knows Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. This just makes doing it even more fun because even Marvel distinguishes this way, them this way on their merchandise. Uh, here's another one I made. <laughs> this one's got 10,000 views uh, 11 hours ago. Uh, this, one, this one I posted 14 hours ago. Uh, that's back when that original post only had 3.2 million views. So if you post... I, I genuinely can't imagine... Like, I, I, I genuinely cannot believe Asmongold, for, like, a span of months, was just reacting to this guy's videos uncritically on stream, like, multiple vids a day. Like, like, it's actually insane. Like, he, he's, his, his, like, small, smooth brain is visible through the video. Post a couple of them. One of them is bomb. He's less charismatic than No Bullshit and uh, The Quartering. That is true. I would rather be watch watching No Bullshit or The Quartering right now. This guy is very boring and uncharismatic. There is a lot of money in being a talentless hack, but just calling shit woke and, like, clickbaiting that.
bound to go viral. So like that's kind of the trick. So here's some more. This one's almost to a thousand likes. Like this one's taken off now. This has got 32,000 impressions. Uh, and I blatantly say, look, I'm just doing this. I'm do I'm blatantly saying I'm doing this for attention and people will come in and, and shit on this one. It's so funny. You think like this is, and I see people mm. say, there's one guy that's really mad was like, I'm tired. I'm so tired of this argument. And uh, it's like, well, dude, stop going out and engaging people whenever they say this. If you're so confident that he's Spider-Man, why do you have to patrol the internet and call people racist every time they say he's not Spider-Man? Because, okay, so for one, because people who say that Miles Morales isn't Spider-Man are racist because he factually is Spider-Man, and the only reason you would say he's not is because he is a black character who has for a long time been the subject of a lot of, like, racist like vitriol in the fan base and it is a popular thing among said racists in the fan base to say that he's not the real spider-man so when you indicate that you don't think he's the real spider-man that indicates to the average like person passing by that you're a racist and that you have a racist hate obsession with a popular character that is well liked by a lot of people. So yes, on Twitter, the social media site, when your post goes viral because you are shitting on a popular character right after a movie starring that character has just come out and the reason for hating that character seems to be racist, then yeah, people are going to go after you. It's not like a dub or like an epic troll or an own. You, you just you're just retarded. Man. It's just a question. Bonjour. Why do you have to, if you're the so confident minor. about it, why are you going around and patrolling people talking about him? Like even this, this is from one of their omnibuses or a trade paperback. They don't even put the Spider-Man on as if it's just Miles Morales in big, bold capital letters. This is why people run this joke. You could thank Marvel for that shit. Because it should just say Spider-Man or Ultimate Spider-Man. That's what it should say, but they don't do that. Wait. 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 Bro, you, you know that the title, The Ultimate Spider-Man, is not his name. They don't say, that's The Ultimate Spider-Man. That is that is a subtitle for the sake of... For the sake of understanding what var variant of Spider-Man in this story we're talking about here. Like, there, there's literally, like, hun like there's like a hundred different titles prior to the term Spider-Man that have come before Spider-Man for both Miles Morales and Peter Parker's Spider-Man to denote, like, which one we're talking about here. And what story, because, like, there's different stories and, like, events that happen, right? Like, whatever run of, of Spider-Man is happening right now is, like, a different title than, like, uh, Civil War Spider-Man, which I think was, like, uh, I forget what, which one that was. I, they, they all have different, like, t yeah. It's like, a, it's, like, a way of, like, denoting which, which comic arc are you reading right now? Which canon are you reading in, in the comic line? This guy, I don't read comics a lot, guys. Like, the most comic reading I've ever done has been the Walking Dead comic. And that is not, like in the format or style of a Marvel or DC comic book, right? Um, and I know more about this shit than he does. And you want to know why I know more about it? Because a lot of the time that I'm, like, playing games or just fucking around off stream, I'm listening to some, like, Comics Explained type channel that, like, explains, like, esoteric comic book Marvel or DC lore. So go talk to... Go talk to... Um... Marvel about their marketing for the character because that shit doesn't help either. I'm just saying, but it's just really funny to me. You will get instant engagement. Go. If you go on to Twitter and just type in miles Morales is miles Morales, He's Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And you put some picture of miles like in Spider-Man on a thing and just meme it or something. You don't even have to use a picture. Really? You can just say uh, something making fun of Miles Morales, and these people will roll right in. I'm not even, like, this always works. It's guaranteed engagement. It's wild. I've never seen anything like it. I almost wonder, 
and there are companies that do this. There are companies. He's trying to allege a conspiracy now because people called him out on Twitter for being racist, for being racist towards a popular character. Companies that troll, uh, for example. Apparently Yellow Flasher showed uh, his face. Political organizations like. that. So this is what Yellow Flash looks like in real life, by the way, for those who need to know. This is him in real life. This is like confirmed him IRL. Wearing a mask like a cuck. Ooh. Will mask troll cuck. like certain political party people and stuff. A really good example. A lot of people thought the troll Renfamous was hired by an organization to troll people. Like, I wonder if some of these people are, are paid to troll or if these are like <laughs> a lot of these people are bots. Wait, I thought he was trolling and not troll for uh, anyone making fun of Miles Morales. It's uh, it's wild. Try it for yourself and see if it works. I bet you, even if you're a small account and don't get much engagement, I bet you you'll get some engagement on that post. It's it's really wild. Do you think there's a company? This is so much cope. with paid people that are doing this. Let me know what you guys think about this. What do you what are your guys' thoughts on this in the comments? Do you have theories to why people get so mad about Miles Morales trolling? Because it's a real thing. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on this. I'd like to hear them. Also, please like, subscribe, share the video. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Check out my Rumble and Locals, and I'll see you on the next one. Okay. Dude, that video was outright embarrassing. That video was outright embarrassing, dude. Like, how how do you... How do you maintain self-respect after uploading that? How do you upload that and watch the bar fill up as it says rendering and then watch it process on YouTube and then press publish? How do you do that? How do you not immediately think, hmm... No, I think this would probably be cringe. I should just leave this one alone. I got owned on Twitter. I should just move on. Dude, he got fucking destroyed, and that was just his little copium sesh. That was embarrassing, dude. Yeah, completely lacking in any self-awareness, I guess. What do you guys think of that segment? I feel like it came out pretty good. What are your thoughts? Hell yeah. Really quick, while we've got so many new people in chat right now from the Vosh raid, thank you all so much for coming, by the way, and thank you to Ian for the raid. Um, uh, uh, I want to let you all know, after stream, I am going to be hosting a watch party of Adventure Time in my Discord server in the Xander's Theater channel, okay? We're going to be continuing Adventure Time as we're, hype we're getting hyped and binging it in, in preparation for the new show. The Fiona and Cake show is going to be premiering at the end of the week in like three days now. Um, we've gotten about halfway through the show now and we're watching a condensed binge list that cuts out the filler, which is nice. Um, we are about halfway through the show now. Uh, so we'll be starting with... I think we're starting with Red Starved is our next episode. Or it's like one of the episodes, uh, like the second or third episode in we'll be starting. Um, but here's the thing. There are 50 slots... There are 50 slots in the voice chat, which means only 50 people can join. And there are hundreds of people here now, which means it's first come, first serve as to who gets to get in there. Oh, I just got an achievement. Zombie doctor. I just got the achievement. Yo. I wish achievements uh, blared out across server like they used to. It sucks they don't, but I just got, I just cured a villager for the first time on 2B. I don't know how I hadn't done that before. Um, let's go, dude. We cured our villager. Is the sun... No, the sun's going down, son of a bitch. All right, we're getting in our hole with the villager. All right, we're getting in our villager hole, and we're waiting for the sun to come back up so that we can make it back home safely. Okay. Why not a torch in there? Because I have, uh, I have Fulbright on with my hack client. This is 2B2T. You can hack. You don't need torches. All right, really quick, before we move on to the next segment, I'm going to read some donos. <clears throat> oh, is that, is that a fresh one right there? 
I think that's a fresh one. The Mog Miner, thank you so much for the $10 donation. I really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, says GG from a former Minecraft dev and VO. Wait, real? A former Minecraft dev? You got you gotta prove that right now. You you gotta Yeah, you prove that right now. Wait, real? Like like an official dev, or did you dev for like a mod or I can? Hot damn. Well, it's an honor to have you here. It's not a lie? Well, that's fucking awesome. Well, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I've been playing Minecraft since, like, 2011. Pretty awesome. Thank you for, for developing the game that I played for so long. I worked there from late 2013 to early 2015. Well, that was the, that was the golden era. That was the golden era of me playing the game. That was when the game was at its best, was 2013 to 2015. Like, let's be real. Like, the, the game, culturally and gameplay-wise, was at its best starting from around the, like, beginning of the, like, not the adventure update. The adventure update had some things wrong with it that were, like, a little bit iffy, like the world gen wasn't the best. But once we got, like, a few updates into the into the adventure update, like, into 2013, going on to, I feel like 2016 is when Minecraft started to kind of fall off. So you were literally there during the Minecraft's peak, in my opinion. I don't think the game's fallen off, like, as far as games go, but in relative terms to where I feel it was during my peak enjoyment of it, I feel like... I feel like back in 2013 to 2015 was the game's peak. Nostalgia-wise, I have the most for beta 1.7.3. I feel like there's just something about going back to old modded versions of that, you know? Um, but yeah, Welcome! Welcome, welcome. I'll give you a, uh, I'll give you a, um, a cool roll on the site chat for it. Lay Epic's site chat roll. Yeah. Uh, do, 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 do. There you go. It's nice to have you here. I used to play a bootleg when I was small, Worldcraft, bad, awful, now I have the real thing, kidnapped a baby axolotl for my girlfriend. I gotta get axolotls, dude! Okay, I am right on top. I am right on top of a, um, of like a, a mossy cave biome. There's axolotls down there, I know it. I gotta get, I gotta get that axolotl. I gotta get, I gotta get me some axolotls for the ocean city. Can they just swim around in the ocean? Like, if I just get a bunch of axolotls, could I just have them be swimming around the ocean, around the sea, the ocean city that I'm building? It's not going to be Xanlantis. It's going to be called Abyssaurus. I guess we could vote on it if you guys would want it to be called Xanlantis or Abyssaurus. But the name I came up with was Abyssaurus, like, years ago, back in 2017. I want to know about this too, this uh post date this uh post dated one point eight. This post dated one point eight eight. Or this post dated one point eight. They spawn randomly in almost every water source I've seen them in, villages and in caves. Oh. The colors have different rarities. I saw a pink one. I saw a pink and a yellow one. I think those are the rarest, right? Isn't the pink one, like, the rarest or something? But it despawned when I went back down into the cave. But there's a moss cave beneath me, and two two can spawn there. Blue's the rarest color. Blue axolotls are, like, shinies. So pink and blue are the rarest. Okay. All right, I'll keep that in mind then. Yeah, because I, I, I want to actually get into the new content, because I'm going to be completely honest. Sorry for the confusion. 1.8 was the last official version I worked on. I like how... The last version you worked on was the version that people consider to be the last good version of the game before, like, the combat got fucked up and, like, people, like, I feel like 1.8 was the turning point of when people got really upset with the game for a long time, and then the nether update is when things started to get a lot better. Like, I think, I think things really started to pick up with the nether update a bit, still some problems, but I think uh, Cave Update was a big step in the right direction. And I'm not going to lie, 1.20 is a good update. They got upset with it because Notch turned out to be a fascist. Yeah. Notch was, uh... Notch was, uh... Yeah. 
e easier via voice. I'd totally have you on stream sometime to um to talk about like Minecraft development for sure. I am in a bit of a rush today because I've got a uh, watch party I'm hosting tonight. Uh, like literally right after stream, I've got to get to. But um, if you stop in and stream whenever I'm doing gaming or just anything, I'd be happy to have you on stream. Absolutely, and send me a friend request on Discord too. Also, the watch party tonight, um, it's going to start as soon as stream ends, and it is first come, first serve, so you want to make sure you're there, okay? You still up for us playing Hytale together when it finally goes live? Oh, hell yeah, you better believe it. Yeah, Hytale's going to be, uh, going to be hype. Not to be annoying, but can I send you an important Discord message? I need you to do something really quick. Yes, Cherry, yeah, you can. Whew, a lot of, a lot of stuff going on today on stream, goddamn. Oh, yeah, of course. Hey, guys. You know the um, the guy that I uh, showed recently who did the uh, coverage of Matt Walsh? I showed his clip a couple times. He did the coverage of Matt Walsh hosting the, uh, like, diaper, grown men at diaper Nazi fights. Um, his channel name uh, is Just Freakin'. And he wanted to get a shout-out. So I'm going to... Give said shout out. Here you guys go. Go check out the channel Justin Freakin. There's your shout out. Hell yeah. Okay, really quick. Um, I got to read a bunch of donos. And then we got to move on to the next segment as I get this villager back to my uh, raid farm. All right. <clears throat> Panic Stasis, thank you so much for the tier 2 gifted sub to the Mog Miner. Hell yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate the $10, and I'm sure the Mog Miner appreciates the gifted sub. It says, let's go, let's go, even if he's given a blue name. Let's go. Cherry T21, thank you for the five tier 1 gifted subs. I really appreciate the $25. Very kind of you as well. To Crip Chirp, Crip, Ch Crick Chirp, Skeptical Squid, Witch Flowers, Trimmers Shake, and Null Integer. Thank you, thank you. Says, this is a real comic. What is this? No cruelty is small enough for the mad titan Thanos. This time, for some reason, he decided to ruin David's life, appearing on his birthday every year for the purpose of tormenting him. At the age of one, Thanos would appear, and his first cruel act was to steal the baby's blanket to make him cry. At five, his father would go to buy his birthday cake. Only when he got home, Thanos would kill him. At 16, he would wake up to a message from his girlfriend wishing him a happy birthday. But Thanos would show up and cause his breakup. At 21, he would kill all his friends by poisoning their drinks. At 27, caused his firing, and he also killed his cat. At 30, Thanos would miss his birthday as he was busy invading Earth, which he loses against the Avengers. At 31, David, thinking he would never see him again, would find him outside preparing the barbecue, and this time his gift is to destroy everything around his house. At 45, Thanos would break a pipe to flood his house, but this is probably the last time he will see David. <laughs> that is that fucking real that is insane dude thank you i appreciate you letting me know that comic is real cherry t21 um thank you so much for the 25 dollars, and i hope everyone enjoys those gifted subs thank you thank you and the mog miner thank you for the 10 dollar donation says gg from a former minecraft dev and vo oh yeah you you said that that's that's what like spurned the entire stun lock <laughs> we're fine we finally got back to the original dodo thank you all so much um, and then Panic Stasis, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I really appreciate it. Thank you for the five dollars. Says, why do all the sub tiers have a picture of a hand grasping bacon? Is this lay like Reddit where the bacon narwhals at midnight? It's from my old pig puncher name, but uh, it, I have to update the uh, the like the symbols there or like the logos. It's been literal years. I've forgotten to do it. Thank you for reminding me. And then the Mog Miner with another ten dollars. Thank you. Says, down for a talk with a former Minecraft dev. As I said before, absolutely freaking lootly I am. But not today because I do have to get to a previously scheduled engagement. But tomorrow or any future day you want to, you can just drop right in, and I'll be down to uh, to fit that in because that'd be awesome. You know, the crazy thing is, you might have been on the um, timeline-wise. You might have been. On, well, would you have been? Would you have been on the old Sfax loading screen? Because there was the old school, because Mojang was a much smaller, like the, the Mojang and the Minecraft dev team were so much smaller back in the day. So much so that you could fit them on like a lineup. 
So there was this old Sfax, Sfax loading screen Mojang. There was this old uh, layout for it that was like all the Mojang employees. I wonder if you were on that. Ryan has amazing hair. Oh, is that a reference to you? Wait, that's dope. Where is it? Ah, oh. wait, it's not coming up here. Is there no instance of it on Google? Of that one Sfax loading screen? Huh, I can't find it. That's so weird. Well, there, there used to be I. Hell yeah, that's cool. That's really cool. I remember one of my favorite things whenever I'd boot up like old tech at Classic back in the day would be I'd see that um that art that they did for the Sfax team of all the uh all the devs uh Minecraft devs back then all standing in a line. It was just it was just cool. It was cool. It contributed to that feeling of like back then especially Minecraft despite its overwhelming success as a game uh felt like this like indie game that had tumbled into accidental like uh fame uh but it was still like an indie game but now it doesn't really feel that way <laughs> ever since microsoft bought it it's kind of hard for it to keep that charm um now it's like okay you're a triple a minecraft's a triple a game now let's 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 make it feel triple a please <laughs> And so now there's just a lot more ill will towards Mojang these days in the Minecraft community. Which is sad. Because, like, I actually do think 1.20 is a step really far in the right direction. I really, really do. Um, the way that they changed up acquiring Netherite armor, um, as much as I'm totally bypassing that with how I'm getting Netherite now on 2B, and I'm going to dupe a ton of Netherite armor and never do this on 2B, but the way that they're making it so you have to get those upgrade templates for, um, from the Nether Bastions, that is a good change. That is, like, a objectively really good change. 1.20 is really good. And the fact that 1.20 is already out means 1.21 is going to be really interesting. What did they add in 120? Armor trim. It's just mostly quality of life stuff. Just a ton of quality of life stuff that people have asked for for a while. Um, and I think that's really neat. I think it's really, really cool. Also, Mogminer, I'm on 2B2T right now. I assume you know what that is. Like, I, f I feel like you would know. Um, but if you don't, it's the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. What a crazy time. I'm streaming on 2B2T. I've got an ex-Minecraft dev in the chat. We've got our villager cured, and we're taking it back to where he needs to go. They should add volcanic and ice caves. I would love for Minecraft to have some volcanic uh, generation. That would be so cool. Um, Kojo Max 99 added that in with the uh, uh, Tropicraft mod. Uh, Tropicraft had fully functioning uh, uh, volcanoes, and they would like erupt. And coat the land in lava. I was never too much into the Minecraft servers, TBH. Um, I mostly kept it uh, kept to myself. Oh, well, that's really interesting. You don't know about this. So 2B2T, it's called Two Builders, Two Tools, uh, is what it stands for, um, is the oldest anarchy server in Minecraft. It's been running since 2010 without a single reset. And um, the map has not reset. It's running on the same map. There are no rules. You can do whatever you want. You can hack, cheat. You can say anything you want in the chat, as you can see on the bottom left. That's why I'm hacking right now and using a hack client, as you're allowed to on here. And so the whole idea is that, like, it's total anarchy on this server. And uh, it's it's got quite the active player base. There's a massive queue of players waiting in line just to get on right now. But this is how many are on as we speak. What the fuck? I got... Oh, I got, gel I got poisoned by a pufferfish, I think. I think I got pufferfished. Okay, hopefully the pufferfish isn't able to kill my villager. That would really suck. Okay, um... We need glass. I need glass. Give me the glass. Alright, once we've got this villager uh, glassed in, we'll start our final segment of the day, which is going to be on Chris Chan. That's right, guys. I'm letting you guys... I'm letting you guys simmer and wait for the Chris Chan segment just a little bit longer before we start that one.
So they kept things going with the same basic stuff with whatever. That's so cool. Yeah, like the, there's a lot of very sharp chunk uh, generation. Uh, like basically what will happen is uh, two versions will be side by side each other. Uh, they'll have been generated. And it'll create these insane chunk trails. So it's really cool. I seriously need to get some sleep. But if you need a uh, side commentator, hell yeah. Um, well, I, I appreciate you, um, you coming into chat if you've got to get to bed. But uh, I mean... Like, I, it's awesome having you on the stream. Like, it really, really is. I'm fanboying out, having a Minecraft dev in the chat. Um, but yeah, for sure. Um, definitely uh, stop by stream, like, either tomorrow or, like, any of my future non, like, uh, like engaged streams. And uh, I'll definitely have you on for a talk. We can talk about politics and Minecraft development. All right, we got to seal this little buddy in. We got to make sure this guy is totally safe from any drowned or anything like that getting to him. Because that is a concern, by the way, is drowned can get to, to your villager in your boat, in a boat. And so, yeah, we really want to, you really want to make sure drowned can't get to our boy. Okay. Holy crap. I think we've done it. Guys, I think we've actually done it. Wait, no, we haven't. Oh. We gotta finish. We gotta finish caving him in. I'll do my best. You can probably find me on Twitter, but the villager needs safety. Oh, yeah. the um, I got banned off of Twitter because Elon Musk uh, is a cuck, and he didn't like that I have the, the name Xanderhal, and that I already had the X branding before he did. Um, in reality, I, I told a conservative to uh, commit die. But, uh, yeah... I'm not on Twitter, but if you add me on on uh, uh, Discord, I'll definitely be able to get back to you. Yes, we did it! We did it! He's safe! Our raid farm is now ready to go. All we need to do now is kill one of those pillager guys to get Bad Omen, and head over here and go up to the top, and it will be ready to start grinding. I will say, though, I should probably add some extra chests to the uh to the loop unfortunately i'm terrible at discord my username on there is just xander hall but if you um do exclamation point discord in the chat there'll be a link to join my uh discord server and from there you can right click to uh to join mine Ooh, jungle biome dude jungle biomes to me are still new everything added after 1.1 like, uh, release 1.1 to me is still a new feature. When I see cats or a jungle biome, I'm like, oh, those new cats and jungle biomes. I should tame a cat. I've literally never in vanilla tamed a cat. I've never done it. I've never had a pet cat in Minecraft because they were such a new feature that it's just, I was always, like, overwhelmed. Trans Nico 2B2T just whispered me in game. Some real shit. Meow, nya. Uh, colon three, mirror, hey, hey, tilde, colon two. I love how 2B2T players are split between literal Nazis and then also people like trans Nico 2B2T. <laughs> <laughs> this is such a good server. It's such a good server. Okay. Um, holy crap, Midnight Kitty Boy, thank you for the $40 donation. I really appreciate that. Hot damn. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is so nice of you. Says, um, uh, Blue Ditto Hype. Nice. Uh, I guess you got a Blue Ditto or something. I'm gonna get a Blue Axolotl, and that's gonna be my shiny Pokemon. <laughs> thank you. I really, really appreciate that. That is overwhelmingly kind. And then Jay Spoon, thank you for the tier one sub. That is really, really kind of you as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the five dollars. Says behind in VOD Vouch Raid. Well, hopefully you catch up. Thank you. All right. Let me update the dono goal, and it's time to get into the final segment of the day, and uh, and then we're gonna be wrapping up stream and doing the watch party, guys. You guys have been overwhelmingly supportive today. All right. Gotta throw that Pokeball. All right.
First, I'm going to take a quick bathroom break, and I'm going to make coffee as well. I know, I know. I've literally streamed for, two, like, three hours now without a bathroom break, though, okay? You deserve the support. Thank you, Rue. I will be right back, guys. Right back. Just a second. I'm edging you on the Chris Chan segment. I'm edging you. Ed edging you all for dis discipline. I decided against coffee because I didn't want to keep you guys waiting that long. But I feel so much better. I really had to pee. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. Let's get the final segment ready. No longer shall I edge you, my lovely chatters. No longer. Looks like the mentally ill. <laughs> That's a good start. It is time. How did you manage to hit the restroom that fast? Holy moly. Oh, it's right there. Like, my bathroom is, uh... My bathroom's that door right there. Like, that door. It's just my toilet. I just, I just, you know, speed piss. And then I, I wash my hands very quickly. And then I run back. Or maybe I don't wash my hands at all. You guys will never be able to prove otherwise. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my piss closet over there. Um, okay, so... <laughs> Y'all know what to do when I say action, right? Three, two, one, action. All right, everybody. This is a topic that is not really in line with what I usually discuss on, like, on my stream and on my channel. Um, this is more of like a drama YouTuber, like, uh, you know, edge tuber topic to discuss, but... I feel it's important that lefties discuss this drama, for lack of a better term, as much as possible, because if we're not, the right will be. Um, we're talking about Chris Chan. I, I imagine many of you here are already familiar with who Chris Chan is, but I'm going to give you all a um, an explanation of who Chris Chan is first. I want you to imagine, in your mind right now, in your mind's eye, every single negative stereotype you possibly can that the right makes up about trans people, particularly trans women. Every negative stereotype, true and false, that right-wingers will try to ascribe to trans uh, people. Now distill them all into a single person, imagine that person in your head, make them ten times worse and more cringe... And that is the person that you have. That is Chris Chan. That, that, that is who Chris Chan is. And they have been an online 
infamous celebrity of sorts for quite a while now. In fact, it is said that Chris Chan is the most documented human being in human history. And uh, Chris Chan is also a trans woman. But here's where things get a little complicated. I'm going to right off the bat explain why I'm going to be using they, them pronouns for Chris Chan instead of she, her pronouns. Um, and the reason for this is as follows. Uh, Chris Chan has gone on record admitting that the reason why uh, she came out as trans or is like presenting as trans and going by she, her pronouns is uh, for the purpose of getting, quote unquote, a boyfriend free girl. The goal uh, from Chris Chan's own mouth is to be able to uh, open up the market of boyfriend free girls, as they will say, to lesbians. Literally a cis guy dressing up as a woman and pretending to be a trans woman to try and have sex with lesbians. That That is that is what Chris Chan has done. And admitted it publicly. So there's no ambiguity to be had. There's no like argument you can make about how that's not the case. But it gets far worse than that, by the way. Um, the reason why it's relevant that Chris Chan is trans at all is the fact that Chris Chan is also a predator. A sex predator who has re who recently, by recently I mean a couple years ago, went to jail for sexually assaulting their own dementia-having mom. I imagine the video we're about to watch will do a better job than what I can at summarizing this, but let me explain to you why I feel it's important that I even talk about it and cover it. You guys should probably already be able to guess by now, frankly. Whenever Chris Chan first hit massive virality, when the story of what she, like they did to their mom came out, I immediately covered it, and I even recommended to Vosh that he should cover it too, because I think the right is going to weaponize it in a very insidious way against trans people. Vosh didn't really want to, and he said it's probably not going to be a big deal, and we had like a debate on stream about it, actually. I think it's up on my channel now um, that you can watch. I totally won, by the way. Um... And uh, I was proven right very quickly after, um, where very shortly after we saw massive amounts of conservatives, notably uh, like Blair White, using the Chris Chan story against trans people as a whole. And they've already been re re weaponizing it for months. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that this was like years ago, though. Um, years ago, when, th when this first happened... Um, like, uh, I, I was like, we need to get on top of this and start, like, talking about how this is not... Like, we need to talk about it and denounce it and make it clear this is not representative of trans people or the left or progressivism or what the left advocates for. Um, so that it's just out there, right? But it doesn't change. It certainly doesn't change whether or not the right covers it, but it definitely helps to make it so people who would be getting their news otherwise from nothing but transphobic right-wing, like, uh, chud channels... Um, might be getting news about it from, like, a lefty channel that's not transphobic. It's about the phrasing? I think, I think I'm misinterpreting what you're saying, the Mog Miner. Could, could you, re, like, rephrase it? Because I, like, the, whenever I'm reading chat, it's hard to, like, put together the pieces. It's about the phrasing? Okay, I think I know what you mean. Yeah, I mean, what, what I mean is that I think, ooh, perfect. I think the issue is that um, uh, uh, I don't want conservatives to have full market, like like a complete like say on the market of like covering the Chris Chan thing, probably the biggest story of the entire internet, you know? Like everybody's going to be talking about it, and I'd rather it be lefty figures and not transphobes that talk about it. That's basically my logic. Zan, you should unironically do more segments like this, IMO. I will say what I really enjoy is doing the segments where I'm playing a game in the background. Like, the, the 2B2T in the background while doing segments has been a lot of fun. Wait, what? Is it not triggering the raid? What, I have, I, I have Bad Omen. Wait, what? Hold on a sec. What's going on? Out of bed also? 
Oh, there needs to be a bed. I know one villager will do it. I've done it with just a village. Oh, you know what doesn't need to be a bed? It needs to be a uh, tool. It needs to be a tool. Okay. Anyway, um, as I was saying, I just feel it's good that um, that there's be that there be somebody on the left to cover it. The issue is, as I see it, uh, uh, that Gino 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 Samuel is already a righty. Yeah, I mean Gino Samuel. I can't tell what the politics G Gino Samuel has are. I will say he commented on one of my videos once. Initially, Gino Samuel tried to have some level uh, of even headedness, but that's evaporated in the intervening year or two. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it has to do with the the sexual assault probably made it a lot harder to cover Chris Chan in a way that wasn't rude. Um, you don't find a lot of uh, sympathy at all for Chris Chan these days, <laughs> pretty much anywhere online. That's after the uh, the shit with uh, their mom. Anyway, I think this video will probably do a good job of basically catching us up on the drama. So, let's get right into it. The person who essayed their own mother is trending on Twitter again. I wonder what- Oh, oh yeah, Chris Chan being trans has no bearing on any of this stuff. Like, it doesn't, but it is important to talk about how the right is weaponizing it, right? Like, like I wouldn't be bringing it up if it wasn't for the fact the right inevitably brings it up. Because <laughs> it is un unrelated entirely. Like, the, the, the issue of her doing this, or of Chris Chan doing this, is unrelated to, uh... To, to them being trans. Hold on a second. Um, covering uh, Chris Chan's previous misdeeds doesn't require intersecting her more recent ones. That's why I take issue with Gino. Yeah. Yeah, I do think there's a bit of a... Too much of an effort to sort of narrativize it. I can see that. Here, one sec. Um, composter. Oh, it's just slabs. Okay, cool. Just slabs. Oh my god, Chris Chan is a free man, and he won't even be registered as a sex offender. This news came out on Twitter yesterday, and of course, a lot of people had stuff to say about it. Manlet tore in response to this by saying, Okay, I will say the fa so that that is the that is the new like breaking news, by the way, is that Chris Chan has been released and is not even going to be charged as a sex offender, which is it's a little concerning, considering, yeah, Chris Chan did commit sexual assault against their own mom. Like, their own mom. That's... Yeah. That's, 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 that's pretty... That's pretty fucked. Like, like I did feel bad for Chris Chan for years until this, like, until the sexual assault thing. Okay, please don't hit the villager. Oh, okay, we hit the boat. We just hit the boat. Okay, hold on. Just gotta keep the villager in here. Uh. Okay, he's now a farmer. Oh, I don't have bad omen anymore. Okay, so I guess I don't have Bad Omen anymore. But this should work now. If I get... Unless the raid started. I think the raid might have started. Well, let me check. If not, I just gotta get Bad Omen again, and I think it'll work. Okay. Yeah, um... No, the, the not getting... Not being labeled as a sex offender, or not getting listed as a sex offender thing is pretty bad. Like... That that needs to be the case. The dimensional merge has no hold on the Void Walker. Undefined responds, you cannot imprison the jailkeeper of the void. Patback Nitro says, Look, Miss CPU Blue Yeah, you're completely right, the Mog Miner. So much about um what Chris Chan did was goaded on by people online as well. That's something you do have to remember, is that a lot of this shit didn't just happen out of nowhere, unprompted. A lot of it was goaded on and, and like, uh, encouraged by an insidious group of uh, online trolls, mostly on Kiwi Farms and 4chan and stuff. So, it didn't just materialize out of nowhere. Like, Chris Chan probably would not have gotten anywhere near as bad if they'd just been left alone to live a normal life. But, you know, the whole online... 
I not get Bad Omen from that? The whole online, like, hate brigade and trolling squad and, and like, stalking actually is probably what escalated it to the degree that it went to. Yeah. And part of that being involved with Nier slash View, who's one of the gold stars of Kiwi Farms. Yeah, wasn't there, um... I don't remember all the details perfectly, but wasn't it, like, proven that Chris Chan was, like, convinced into doing that? Or maybe it was just that Chris Chan was, like, like made comfortable and then admitted to doing it. I, I forget exactly what... into doing the sexual assault. I forget exactly how the, the line of events went. Okay, we gotta fly around until we find some pillagers to kill for Bad Omen now. Oh, this is entirely separate from Chris. I'm sorry, when it comes to reading chat, it can be hard because there's so many messages that are getting broken up and out of context. And, like, the messages come in at a rate of, like, uh, you know, they come in at a normal, at, like, you know, at the speed that they're typed in. But because there's a five second delay on the stream, I might have already changed topics by the time I read the message. And so I'll think it's in response to something I'm talking about now, but it was actually in response to something I was saying five seconds ago or 10 seconds ago, or sometimes even 30 seconds ago. And I'll get like really confused. <laughs> in mid 2021, Kiwi Farm succeeded in pushing near to the point of ending their own life. Oh yeah. Okay. The near thing. That was, that was um, the, the suicide that, yeah, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, Kiwi Farms has been responsible for numerous um, harassment campaigns that have led to suicides and many more suicide attempts. The heart lightning bolt of the CPU's Commodore consoles, Jesus Christ Chan Sonic 2. If you promise I can meet Batman, then we're gonna clean your mom of everything she owns. Dying Scribe reacts to this by saying, What the hell? How good is his lawyer? Rock Solid quote tweets him and says, The lawyer. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot of better call Saul Super memes, isn't Orange it? Cat responds. Chris Chan has this amazing immunity from consequences that scientists need to study. Chessman says, "Did he call Saul?" To which Kung Fu Man responds, "I think even Jimmy would avoid this one." Jerry then responds with this picture of Saul Goodman talking to Chris and saying, "Listen, kid, I can do serial killers. I can do public masturbators. I can do cancer-ridden meth kingpin chemistry teachers. But you? I'm only on part 30 of your 50-hour documentary, and just looking at you and this." Dude, I'm not gonna lie, the fact that the internet has normalized the obsession with Chris Chan as much as it has since the arrest is, like, should be a very, like, clear, stark sign as to, like, how bad internet culture was going downhill in this time towards right-wing uh, uh, bias. It has always been mostly conservatives that have, like, been online harassing and stalking Chris Chan since the start, really. Um, and now that it has become, like, a mainstream thing to be part of the Chris Chan stalking, uh, like, like, thing, it is pretty disturbing when you think about it. Like, it should really, really alarm you a bit. I'm looking for a pillager outpost chat for those that are wondering what I'm doing. In this case, I'm just getting started. And, like, People are legitimately obsessed with it. Like, the, the degree to which, like, the it has been normalized to be obsessed with Chris Chan is crazy. The art that we're looking at right now was just casually made and posted on Twitter as a response to this. There are, like, dozens of, like, original art memes made in response to this Chris Chan thing. And as funny or cool as some of them might be in the moment, when you really stop to think about it for a moment, it, it is really fucked. At how normalized the Chris Chan documentation quote has become. Somehow, Chris Chan has been goaded into countless timelines of harassment. Yeah. Honestly, Zan, I have to disagree. I don't know. I do think it is an unhealthy amount of obsession. Like, I think a lot of people are unhealthily obsessed with Chris Chan. I know people who, who are, like, who are, like, legitimately, like, the new Chris Chan doc drops like, a new episode of the docu documentary drops, and it's, like, they drop everything to watch the new episode right then and now. Like, they, they can't do anything else until they've seen the new episode of the Chris Chan doc.
To quote Contra, it's a log. It's a logs all the way down. It's a lot of a logs. It's a lot of a logs. Yeah. <gasps> oh, we can get a we can get a, a a name tag from this sunken ship here you might be the worst case i've worked on and that's saying something vibe tom responds by saying no it's just his mom knew some politician in virginia who was his lawyer based perry responds i don't think barb even knows where she is anymore to be honest canned beef says they traded trump for chris chan dude it is nice though that the like <laughs> I am glad I'm making this uh, this video, though, because most of the coverage of this is just going to be people reading tweets. And I'm not I'm not shitting on Bo Blacks on this one. OK, like, listen, I think this is fine. However, it is nice to be able to have commentary from someone who's like not just shit posting on Twitter, I think, <laughs> on this situation. Um, I think Chris Chan is possibly the best example of, like, the worst that the internet can create. Um, I think that, like, when you look at what the internet has done in regards to... You look at the entire Chris Chan story, and you look at the role the internet and people on the internet played in it, I think it's the best example of how the internet has made our society worse in some way than anything else you could possibly find or, like, dredge up. I genuinely don't think you could find anything better. Um... Like, I, it's disturbing. Like, like even if you just left Chris Chan alone, I think it probably wouldn't have gotten as bad as it got. And it's a sign of the dimensional merge. Paradigm City says, He might be a free man, but I don't know where he'll stay. Is he getting his mom's house? I heard he can never see her again or have any interaction with her. I don't know if Chris is capable of living on his own. To yeah, the, the worry, of course, is that, like... A lot of the people who are talking about this, unironically, they, they want Chris Chan to commit suicide. Um, like, they absolutely do. Like, they are, like, if, they, if their bullying could result in Chris Chan committing suicide, then they would be happy about that. Like, there are tons of people like that that are actively involved in this entire discussion. And those people are awful. Because, like, as much as what Chris Chan did is awful and horrible... I don't think that suicide or death is a good um, is a good response or is a good punishment for that. Chris Chan needs like yeah assisted living and like lots of therapy and professional help is is what Chris Chan needs. To be honest, fans might offer him a place to stay. Not even joking, lol. Christina Tasty quote tweets Dying Scribe and says, Reminder, Chris Chan had the lawyer from B Movie, showing that Chris Chan's lawyer and the lawyer from the B Movie are strikingly similar, owning the exact same suit. Alt History Cody Damn. reacts to all of this by saying, Chris Chan is the main character of the world, and the writers are bad at their jobs. Donut says, Seeing Chris Chan trending really got me like, What the fuck did Chris Chan do this time? Mrs. Columbo says, Christian had his case dismissed. Tisubaki Koro shares this picture of a disheveled man and says, Gino Samuel after finding out that Chris. So, basically, this essentially means that the internet is going to be back on Chris Chan stalking like maximum like they're they're going to be back on the trend of stalking chris chan and making videos and documentaries on the max f from here now that chris has gotten out of uh out of jail is this a mangrove oh just normal swamp um like th this is going to be a much much bigger uh trend now because it's just going to go, it's going to compound, compound itself virally. Um, it is, is it like a Gamergate too? I wouldn't compare this to Gamergate. Um, I would just say this is a yet another like it, thing that the right is going to weaponize like they have been in the culture war um, against like LGBT people. It's nothing new, but it is worth just knowing, uh, well, this is what's going to be happening. Chris Chan is free from the incest rape charges, and the documentary won't end soon. Santa says, Chris Chan is on the naughty list. Nicholas Diorio says, Chris Chan's court case for the incestuous rape of his elderly mother has been dismissed. They're also obsessed with Keffels. One day, you are going to get sloppy, and your entire life is going to collapse like a house of cards. And when that day comes, no one will be there to help you.
Ghosty7702 says, A warning That's, to everyone who's guys? wondering who Chris Chan is after seeing... That's why it's good that I'm covering this shit, because the other content creators covering this shit are all transphobes. They all, they're all like, oh, Chris Chan did a, is out of jail? Ah, yes, this somehow relates to Keffels. What, is it a rape joke? What does that meme mean? It doesn't matter. It's, it's meant to be esoteric and not meant to make any sense. It's probably some, like, extremely niche, like, you gotta be in the noble shit. I don't know. Um, doesn't matter, though, because, like... What, my, my point is that, like, the people who are going to be talking about this and making videos about it are all going to be using it to push transphobic propaganda, except for me. And that's why I feel the need to talk about this. I'm trending. Trust me on this one. You don't want to know. Audrey, don't tell it. You shouldn't have told me, but you did. And now I'm telling you, you don't want to know. Everything Out of Context says, Who is responsible for letting Chris Chan get away with the whole thing? Leroy shares this video with the caption, Chris Chan leaving prison to find Barb be like, Sweet home Alabama But I'm coming back to you Cosmic Star says, Chris Chan the second they released him, Out of my way, I'm going to see my mother. Morgan says, Chris Chan oh, returned yeah, to 14... Boblax isn't transphobic, but he is, like, politically stupid on a lot of stuff, and also the person who, was, who made the meme was. <clears throat> Me too, re-speaking up? Hell yeah. Branchland Court, Rutgersville, Virginia, after his incest charges were dropped. You've got to find an outpost. Urban Living says, Christian walking out from prison back into the real world. Weekend Warrior says, I just realized that Trump gets a mugshot while Christian walked free today. Like, what the fuck is this timeline? Nostalgia Critic November says, When Trump. I like how the implication is that Trump doesn't deserve to be in jail. <laughs> okay was arrested, he only told the officers one thing, let Christian go free. Thunderchild J says, Donald Trump walking into jail for his mugshot when he notices Christian walking out. <laughs> Raildex says, Trump arrested while Christian walks free. The dimensional merge one. is real. Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Job 121. Biscuit Bra shows a picture of Saul. Okay, chat. I will say... The plot of Fio the new Adventure Time show, Fiona and Cake, is literally the dimensional merge. Think about it. It's literally like the- the- it's literally the dimensional merge. <laughs> With Chris Chan and, and- and their fan fiction. That's literally the plot of what happens in the Fiona and Cake show. I'm so excited for it, by the way. Paul Goodman next to Chuck McGill and says, Chris Chan's lawyer versus Trump's lawyer. A real Sigma male posts this picture and says, Chris Chan has been seen taking a picture with Kanye West after he was released. Yuzumi shows this picture of an old man whispering into another old man's ear and saying, Sir, they let Chris Chan go free. Umbrella Rock says, Chris Chan's lawyer getting the rape and incest charges dismissed. Jam the Graph Filler says, I genuinely don't understand why and how Chris Chan can walk free on the incest rape charges when he admitted that he That's fucked George his Bush. mom. Mask Bastard says, Chris Chan had charges dropped today. Farewell, Chris Chan! <laughs> Permaband says, Be Christian. Did unspeakable things to sick and elderly mother. Gets released with no registration. American justice strikes again. NNC Reviews says, By the way, like, sex crimes are absolutely, like, massively under, um, under tried, like, overall. Um, it's part of, it's one of the things that, like, Republicans have ensured. The only case in which Republicans will, like, allow there to be ooh did i find <gasps> yes the only time republicans will allow um substantial uh protections who there we go uh will allow for uh tightening on laws that uh 
uh, um, you know, make are more harsh on sex offenders and whatnot is if they can find a way to twist it against LGBT people. Otherwise, like Republicans literally preserved the legality of marital rape for decades. Like marital rape was totally legal in most of the country a few like two decades ago. My genuine reaction to Not the two, Christian but like news. Three decades ago. <laughs> Lee Delattle says, The Christian situation summarized in one The Incredibles clip. He got away. Raw Milk Chad says, Christian, the good ending. This has all been a trick. You've all been trolled. trolled. That is a good clip. Repsion says, I don't understand how Christian's case was dismissed when he admitted to incest with his elderly mother. We are doomed. Clown World reacts to all of this by saying, What the fuck? Clown Dream World. Leaf says, How is that? I like how we get the Clown World uh, tweet, and Clown World's like a Nazi account for those I don't know. So we get the Clown World account, and then we get Dreamleaf. Possible. CC Mari says, No, Chris Chan deserves life in prison. He deserves to be thrown up under the jail. He did not have an incestuous relationship with his mother. She had dementia. She couldn't consent. He raped her. He is a disgusting individual. Rape the woman that gave him life. This is sick. Stone Tossers posts this comic that shows Chris yeah, the right were the first ones to jump on this shit. Nazis and the alt-right were the first motherfuckers to jump on this shit. Chris Chan in court and his lawyer saying, Objection, your honor. The GameStop incident is irrelevant. Sonic's blue arms were reverted in 2016 with the release of Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympics. Punished Billy reacts to all of this with a picture of angry Chris Chan and the caption, You doubted me anon! Christina Tasty says, This is like a long-standing series being approved for one more season after being cancelled. Jade says, You'll be hard-pressed to find a better example of the failings of our People judicial online system literally than treat this. It like a TV but then show. again, who are they to prevent the dimensional merge. Not only were those underage marriages legal, but the righties are literally bitching that it's not uh, early slash young enough. Yup. And not only that, but um, like, yeah, it, it, it is so frustrating that you can literally watch in real time as the right were like the first ones to jump on this. Expect there to be a lot more transphobic rhetoric online centered around uh, Chris Chan uh, things in the future. Expect it to be like, oh, Chris Chan did th this or that, and somehow that's representative of trans people to essentially be the line of logic used when engaging with right-wingers from here on out. Um, I expect to see a lot more Chris Chan references from transphobes in the near future, because they're not very creative, you know? They just kind of get, like, one... What? It canceled the raid? Why did it work on the old... I So, I've made this raid farm before. Now all of a sudden it doesn't work. Yeah, I'm, there's no way I'm going to be able to get this working on stream. There's just something wrong. There's something wrong, and I, I have no consistent source of, of Bad Omen. Housemaster Pat- No way did he patch a vanilla farm from the game. The site is experiencing multiple keto and Euclid level containment breaches. Full site on the And then to end things off, Fan21 shows this image of a recent drawing made by Chris Chan and says, People are focusing on the fact that Chris Chan's case got dismissed, unaware of the fact that a new piece of Sonic 2 art got released where Chris's persona threatens, I bring, personally, the second coming. He then shows the drawing that Chris Chan made, where it shows their character saying, But we're all toxic haters, sinners, and the darkest demonics for I am. For I am Jesus Christine Western Chandler Sonic 2. The goddess Blue Hearts and your Lord and God. That is God. actually a really and good impression. And I bring impression. personally the second coming. And that's about it for the discussion surrounding Chris Chan getting released from prison. And all I can say is that if you live in Virginia, be careful out there and protect your grandmothers. But with all that being said, I oh God. 
Dude, I, I hate having to cover this shit because, like, outside of, like, occasionally checking out the Geno Samuel documentary when my friends want to look at it, like, I don't really have much of a care in the world for Chris Chan. And I, I feel like people who are extremely obsessed with Chris Chan are, like, wasting their time and their lives, and it's kind of pathetic. But, um... I, I feel it's necessary that I talk about this because, as you can see, like, Stone Toss and all these other, like, far-right Nazi accounts on Twitter and on YouTube were, like, the first ones to get on top of this. So I figure it's worth discussing. Listen, Chris Chan is a fucking weirdo, okay? I get it. And there's going to be a lot of people out there that are going to try to convince you that Chris Chan being a weirdo has something to do with Chris Chan being trans, I'm just going to let you know, Chris Chan was not trans for over a decade of being a massive weirdo. The trans thing was very recent. So I assure you, uh, it's unrelated. It's unrelated. Christine is weird because she is her and that is all. Yeah, like Chris Chan is Chris Chan. And, and that's just that. It, it's no more deep than that. That is why Chris Chan is the way that Chris Chan is. It, it, there's, there, there is no one else who is like Chris Chan. It, one of a kind. <laughs> uh, God, I hate this shit. Okay. Yeah, CWC was always a weirdo. Okay. We have done it. We have finished lay stream. We have finished the topics. What do you guys think of that one? I feel like that final topic came out all right. There's not much to say on it other than, oh my god, I hate that the right is going to weaponize this, but yeah. Everything she is except the terrible person part? Eh. I feel like the reason why Chris Chan is is like bad is the morally wrong stuff chris chan being cringe isn't like it doesn't make chris chan a bad person but the internet was stalking chris chan for being cringe before that and that was the big problem this was felt it's like they finally got something to validate their bizarre parasocial hate obsession they've had for years they finally got something to like validate it in their mind is, is like what they see it as um yeah, the big problem is how to go about it. Yeah, it's hard to talk about without, you know, basically playing into reactionary propaganda. I think I do decently at it, though. Um, yeah. All right, everybody. With all that said, I think that's where I'm going to wrap up stream. We had a fun day on 2B2T. Um, we didn't really get a lot done on 2B, actually, but we managed to get our villager, and I think with a little bit of tweaking off stream, I will be able to get that raid farm working and producing XP, totems, emeralds, and everything. And then from there, I will go ahead and, uh, create a villager, uh, breeding area, where we'll, like, cure up some more villagers and get them breeding. The hero of the village I'll get from the farm and all of the emeralds will be a massive boon of resources. We'll be able to go netherite mining, and then we'll, of course, once we're all set up and with our 1.19 stuff, we got our axolotls, and we've got our, uh, our... We gotta get some, um... We gotta get, uh... Allays. I gotta get some allays from one of those, uh, outposts, too. There's so much stuff we gotta do. And then finally... After a couple days, we'll be ready to start the process of building the underwater city. So I hope you are hyped. It has been fantastic seeing you all today. You've all been amazing. Have a fantastic night, everybody. I hope to see you all in Zan's theater. We are doing a watch party. Can you VC me for a few minutes? I have something very important. Sherry, really? Right, right when we're about to go straight into the watch party? Can it wait till after the watch party, Cherry? Or can it be, it will take five minutes? Okay. It better be super important, Cherry. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a good one, okay? Meet me in Zan's theater in about five minutes. I'll be doing an announcement in my Discord server. We're going to be continuing the Adventure Time watch party. Can you ping me about the watch party? Oh, yeah. It'll be, um, it'll be, an, it'll be like an announcement that'll add everybody. I'm a newbie to Discord. Yeah, you should get the ping. It's gonna be pog as fuck. 
All right, everybody. <sighs> Have. Ooh. Ooh, that's the first time I've stretched in the stream. Not even sure I'm in your Discord. Oh, hold on. You should be able to join just by clicking that link that Zanbot posted. If you click that link, it'll just join you into the Discord. And then from there, um, I will give you a member if when I see you join. And then from there, you should just be able to join the, uh, the Zan's Theater thing by clicking it. So, yeah. All right, everybody. It's been an honor having you all here today. I love you all very much. I cannot wait to see you all tomorrow. As always, have a good one. It's time to order some dinner. I haven't eaten today. <laughs>